Okay, it says we're live. Hello, what's up? Jacob and I here in uh, the studio. <laughs> this is the the uh, improvised studio number two, I think. That's right. All right, hey folks, we're live. Uh, we're doing a special episode today. This is going to be both a podcast as well as just a general video. You know, for many of you watching, some of you may be watching this for the first time. Maybe you never caught us on the podcast before. Uh, but this is a conclusion of the Mountain Man Medical Trauma Care Summit and live Q and A. And so I'm really excited to be with you guys. Uh, we are working with a little bit different than normal setup. So let us know if there's something, you know, any issues with audio or, or the video is not quite uh, working right. Or obviously using a green screen. So never if, we, if we keep looking down, it's because that's where we see your comments and know what you're saying and stuff. Yep. So hello, Cammy and Tris and Gary and Larry, Gary and Larry and Jenny. Hello. Uh, Jenny's watching on YouTube today. I think normally she's on Facebook. So that's Maybe. awesome. Welcome. Yeah, we have several on YouTube there. Good. Yep, Jacob and I were having a good little chuckle before we got started uh, at the size differential between us. <laughs> so, Riley says I'm small, but I'm not small. Yeah, I'm going to shrink it up a little I, bit. Here. I am average. Like I, I am like stereotypical American. I'm five nine. Like that is like the that's the height. Like I'm no, you're big. Six foot's a good height. Like it's. You know, if, if you could, I'm not, I didn't say it in any negative way. I'm just saying that it's not that I'm small. It's that you're bigger than normal. So I'm six, three and you're five, nine. So there's Sorry. a six inch difference. Yep. Wow. David, it looks like more than six. It's no, it's fine. <laughs> well, it's cause you always wear a hat. Maybe that, that makes you feel taller. <laughs> I think so. Larry, like Larry didn't want to say anything about that. I think he was, you know, thinking of the same thing. Welcome Andrew. All right. Jason. All right, come to the club and clear. Good crowd. We got 70, 75 people watching. Yeah. Guys, so remember, today is going to be a live Q&A. So uh, come to us with your questions. We'll do our best to provide answers. And, uh, you know, so stick around. There's a lot of you. Uh, we'll get to all the questions that we can as quickly as we can, as thoroughly as we can. We are going to save uh, a lot of those questions towards the end. Uh, so just a little tip there. You may want to hold off on submitting too many questions. It'll be hard for us to find your question if you submit it now. All right. So we'll let you know and be the appropriate time for you to start uh, rolling out with the questions. Yep. Also some expectations management. We are going to be giving away some prizes today. Uh, we got five of them right here. We have, of course, our Sweetwater and Yellowstone uh, Mountain Man Medical Trauma Kits. So lucky winners are going to go with these today. Also... Have handy here some quick clot. Someone's going to get some quick clot, a Swati tourniquet, and a CAT combat application tourniquet. Yeah. So super super excited about this. Yeah. Uh, about prizes. the prizes we're giving away today: Yellowstone, Sweetwater, all the, all this stuff. I mean, Yellowstone obviously, as of right now, our our price is seventy nine ninety nine. Does that now is that one coming with the the cat no, in it as well? No, no, no. no so it's just, just a base the, the standard, yellow, yep, Yellowstone standard. kit. $80 prize. Yeah, $80. We got a prize that's basically about $50. And then the cat we know is about $30. Quick clots, what, like $22, $3? Uh, something like that, $24 ish. And then, and then uh, Swati's like $18. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. nice little uh, uh, series of prizes there. So excited to give those away here today. Yep. So again, welcome everybody. Uh, just taking a glance at comments here. All right. And uh, Jacob has some notes he wants us to follow. That's well, I don't bad. want That's us to forget thing. anything. Yeah, it's, uh, so again, just just note that oh, someone's calling me. It's none of you, so that's all that matters. Okay. It's so, not your wife either. It's not my wife. Oh, thank goodness. So we're we're gonna we're gonna do most of the Q and A at the end. Like Riley said, we're gonna give away the prizes at the end, and prizes will be awarded based on questions asked. So be thinking of your best questions, but I would hold on to them until we open up the Q and A. Uh, between now and then, you know, we're really going to be going through and we're going to be talking about, uh, you know, the, the summit that we just are is really coming to a conclusion today. We've talked about some other medical related things, answer some questions that we've been getting uh, via email and via message from you guys over the last several weeks. And so that's kind of our, our outline. Do we yep. do we kick it off? It looks like we got over 100 people live yeah, here. I think we should kick it off. You know, a lot of comments about great prizes. I, I agree because even if you already purchased one of the kits, it can never hurt to have another kit, right? So yeah, it's kind of like ammo. More is better. More is better. Yeah. Yeah. So let's do it. All right. So 
Welcome to this live broadcast. In case you didn't know, I'm Jacob Paulson, President of Concealcare.com. I'm joined here by Riley Bowman, President, uh, Director of All Things Awesome, as he says. President? I've uh, been promoted all of a sudden. You've I'm been excited. Promoted. President Director, of something. Uh, you're, you're Director <laughs> of Training. You're uh, host of the podcast. Riley changes up his titles on a regular basis. Sometimes just to get a jab at, at the main man here. The truth is we let all of our employees pick their own titles. <laughs> okay, so today we're going to be really drawing a, this is a conclusion to a summit, an event that we've been hosting over the last two weeks. Today is kind of the final day, the 13th day of this summit. And so we're going to kind of quickly review what's been going on, why it matters, and then give you some more input and ideas about why we did this and why we think it can matter in your life. And then, of course, at the tail end, we're going to finish up with some Q&A. Yeah. You know, as a company, we decided to get into this whole medical kit lineup. Uh, we launched it with a whole new brand, Mountain Man Medical. In case you didn't figure that out, it, it is actually the same company. I mean, the same people behind it. Uh, but Mountain Man Medical, this new brand of medical geared products. Uh, there's more that's going to be coming, by the way. I mean, we have the Sweetwater kit and the Yellowstone kit and a whole bunch of you know other things you can add into these kits or, or if you just want to buy a la carte there's a lot of things you can just buy right from the website but uh, there'll be more coming and we wanted to get into this because for me medical has been important for a long time jacob i know it's really a, a priority for you as well uh, i think it goes without saying i think most of you understand this that arguably having some base knowledge of trauma-based care uh, is more important than even carrying a gun and if you carry a gun then i think you should absolutely without any you know without any honor so with, with full excuse me, what i'm trying to say we're both summing over words today i think if you carry a gun you should be carrying a medical kit and you should know how to use at least the most basic components of that kit at the very least you should be able you should be very familiar with applying a tourniquet uh then there's some other things that you can do too so a number of years ago I took it seriously, decided to get myself trained. Jacob's getting trained and has received some training and is his ongoing in his efforts as well. Um, yeah, super excited to be here and I'm super excited about this new endeavor with Mountain Man Medical. Yeah, it's, it's kind of like what you said. I mean, I, I think of it this way. Um, if you ever have to use a gun, you're definitely gonna need medical gear and knowledge. But beyond the gun, you, there's so many day-to-day -day situations where this comes in handy. Uh, you know, frankly, medical emergencies are a day in, day out occurrence all around us. Uh, whereas violent crime in which I might need a firearm to stop it, not so much. But car accidents, uh, household accidents, uh, natural disasters, of course, violent crime, other things all lead to a need to, to have that, that knowledge. Now, here's, here's the key, though. And this is what I think people need to understand about the decision we made as a, as a business. Our business model traditionally has been to create a bunch of video training around a topic, uh, put it all on a DVD and an online course and sell it. We've done that many times and we feel very good about the content we put out there. We have our complete home defense course over eight hours, fighting from cover, concealed carry fundamentals, vehicle firearm tactics and more. And this is, this is kind of our way to do this. This is what we've always done. But with the medical training, we decided to do something different. We ultimately decided that it, it's so important, not just for the gun owner, you know, our traditional concealed carry audience, but for every American adult, that we decided to make it free. And, and we did that in the format of this summit, or you could call it a, a docu-series, or whatever you want to call it, it doesn't really matter. But we, we, we kicked this off on February 6th, and effectively we decided uh, that we, we kind of you know, outlined out the, the content. We said, what would be a perfect course of, for trauma care medicine? We came up with kind of 13 core modules, and we said, okay, we're going we're gonna to produce these, publish these, edit these, get them out there, and release one a day for 13 days and make it free during the course of the event. Yeah. And today is the 13th day, so the final video was just released and published this morning. And each video, of course, available for 48 hours, so you have until tomorrow night at 11.59 p.m. Mountain Time to watch that final video. And today, you could still watch yesterday's uh, video that was released, which is really my favorite, uh, practical app, uh, tourniquet application and other improvised tools. And you have until the end of today to watch that one because it was released yesterday. But by end of day tomorrow, all the videos will have expired in terms of public access. And so that's that's really important that, that you understand that and you're and you are aware of that. However, I, I will note 
um, that there, there is a way you can get access to all that training content for free permanently. Yeah. Well, and that way is by buying a med kit. Right. A trauma kit from us during this launch period, which has been extended now uh, through the end of this week. Through the end of this week. So through Sunday night, the pricing and the opportunity. Yep. Yep. You buy one of these kits and you automatically gain access to the entire training course. Yeah. So. yeah so, so effectively, even though today is the last day where video is released, we're extending yep. the end of the summit through the end of this week. And, and what that essentially means is that through the end of this week, if you purchase any number of or combination of kits, even if you just bought one of the Sweetwater kits, which is the, the lowest cost option, then you would get permanent access to all 13 of the training videos that have been produced throughout the summit. And of course, you get to take advantage of the summit pricing, which we'll talk a little bit more about later. But long story short, it's cheaper than, than it will ever be again in the future. That's right. You know, and actually, actually speaking of pricing, one of the other reasons why we decided to launch Mountain Man Medical with its own line of medical kits was because we looked at the market and we saw what's all what, what's out there. And there's a lot of great companies that are really, you know putting out some some incredible products and and kits as well uh and you know there's nothing wrong with buying a kit from any number of those companies but we kind of felt like there, there's got to be a way to bring these down a little bit in cost to make them a little bit easier obtained by the average consumer by the average gun owner shooter uh any of you out there looking to get you know a good quality trauma kit you know, I think the point has been made throughout this entire summit, just how critical a kit like this can be, how utilitarian it is, the options it gives you as far as how you can treat people uh, in an emergency situation. And we're not even just talking about gunfights here. We're not even talking about, or not only talking about uh, active shooter, you know, events. We're talking about you come upon the scene of an accident, like I did a number of years ago, and you know, actually it's happened a few times, but there's one in particular that really changed my life. Uh, and there's a lot you can do with just what's in the, in these basic two kits, the Sweetwater and the Yellowstone from Mountain Man Medical. And so the key, the, the goal for us was to not only put together a quality kit, but make it achievable, to make it reachable, more accessible and affordable for, for all of you out there. And I think we've succeeded in, you know, the Sweetwater's under 50 bucks right yeah. now during yeah. this launch, 79.99 for the Yellowstone. Uh, we're not even raking people over the coals over the add-ons, you know, adding a, a tourniquet, for instance. Yeah, and we're, we're going to get in all the details. We're going to show you what's in these kits. I think you're going to be impressed. But, Riley, tell us, tell us more about that incident. I, I know yep. that, I mean, you've had several opportunities to apply your medical training and knowledge, but I think there's one that goes back quite a way specifically that you shared with me. Tell us, tell us yep. about what happened that day. You know, uh about a year or so after I graduated from high school, I was working in the construction industry. I had my own accident, actually a couple of accidents, including one guy getting a finger lopped off. But uh, <laughs> I was coming home from, from work one day, you know, on my usual commute. Uh, I worked in a town about 10, 12 miles away. And uh, I was coming home, driving down this country road, because I kind of, my family, we, we, we lived out kind of in the middle of nowhere. And, uh, I saw something going on in an intersection up ahead. I started slowing down. There's a white pickup truck. Uh, a little. I saw a little motorcycle, you know, like a like a, a youth-sized motorcycle, kind of all mangled and wrecked, and it was off on the side in the ditch. And I'm like, oh boy, this doesn't look good. I pulled over, and I ran up to see what was going on. And the first thing I see is an older gentleman. He was you know, an old farmer. All right, uh, this is kind of in a farming community. Uh, he's kind of sitting on or leaning against the hood of his truck, just kind of in tears. And a mother cradling her eight or nine year old daughter who was out riding this, this little youth sized motorcycle. Uh, and she had gone right through this intersection, uh, didn't see this, this old farmer driving his, his farm truck, and he just plowed right into her at 50 plus miles an hour. And it was, it was a really rough experience. What was even rougher for me was I was looking at this mother. I was looking at this little girl who clearly was not doing well at all. Now, now to be fair, there was not any obvious trauma. There was not like any major bleeds. There was not any like bones sticking out or anything like that. It was, it was definitely head trauma related. 
So there, there might not have been a whole lot that I, I that I personally could have done. Uh, you know, Brian talks about in the, in the summit training videos about how, you know, with head trauma, I mean, like we're going to do our best to make sure people can breathe. We're going to do our best. You know, if we have to administer CPR or something like that, we'll do that. But there's really not a whole lot we can do without a neurosurgeon or something, you know, to, to fix what's going on. And even then, there was unfortunately not a whole lot that could be done for this little girl. But what changed my life was that I remember standing there and thinking, wow, I feel completely hopeless and, and helpless. I didn't know what to do. I didn't know what I could do. I was also even a little bit afraid to put myself in between this mother and her child to say, hey, you know, because she was holding her little girl. Um, you know, and, and it, had this been a different scenario where maybe this little girl was really profusely bleeding and some aid needed to be, you know, immediate aid needed to be rendered. Uh, I don't know if I would have had the confidence as a almost 19 year old kid to say, Hey mom, I need to get in here and work on the, on the, on your girl, you know? And so I felt really alone and helpless in this situation. And I said, you know what? I, I got to change that. Uh, I had been through some basic first aid training with boy scouts and I was a boy scout when I was younger. You know, I wasn't a total stranger to this sort of thing, but I went out, I was not CPR and first aid, uh, certified. And I went out and took a class and got certified. And I've tried to maintain that certification ever since. Um, and that, that, was, that was a life-changing experience for me. Yeah, so today you've been through more training than I want to talk about uh, because it, the, the list gets pretty long. It, it's funny because your story oversects mine in some ways because I didn't have a single uh, event that really shocked me awake and said, oh, my gosh, you know, this is what's happening. You know, I, need, I, need, I need to be more prepared. What happened to me is, you know, as, as a gun owner, as an instructor, as a guy who stands in front of cameras like this and professes to, to know what I'm talking about, I knew I needed medical gear uh, because it's like on the checklist of stuff you have to do to, to sound legitimate and be credible and deal with things. And so I thought, yeah, sure. So I, I've accumulated over the years, you know, if, if we went back like a year ago, like and you, if we had this conversation a year ago, I, I had accumulated a few medical kits. I chucked them in the range bag. I had one in the car. I felt prepared. I felt like the box had been checked. Uh, I, I too was a, a Boy Scout. I'd been through some training. Uh, I knew, you know, I'd, I'd watched a YouTube video or two on how to put on a tourniquet. Like I, I felt fine about it uh, until the day that I found out that I didn't know what I didn't know. And, and we were at the range, and uh, it was it was this was super embarrassing. We had a group of students, Riley and I, I both. I like embarrassing him in case you can't tell. This, Riley has no shame. So we, we had students on, on, at the range, and, and we, you know, as always is the case, before the class begins, you have a medical debrief. You talk about where the kids are going to be. And I had gotten one of my kits out, and I would set it in a certain place and said, hey, you know, here's a kit. And Riley's like, great. If we have an emergency, there's a kit. What's in that, Jacob? And I said, you know, medical stuff. And so Riley walks over in front of the students and rips open my kit and just rips me a new one. Um, it was extremely embarrassing. It was, well, why do you have this and not that? Where, why don't you have one of these and not this? Uh, and and it was it was embarrassing for me because in that moment I realized that I had checked the box I had the stuff, but it was it would it be the equivalent of me buying a gun, and not having made an informed decision just buying the cheapest gun I could find, taking it to a range, shooting it a few times, saying yeah I know how to shoot this gun, and then sticking it in a gun safe and saying I'm good to go. Yeah. Like, as our audience at ConsolidateCare.com, that sounds horrifying to you. But that's effectively what I had done with the medical side of this game. I had bought the kit, watched a few YouTube videos, and stuffed it in my range bag and said, I'm good to go. And, and so that had to change for me after that very embarrassing uh, moment with Riley. I had to really Sorry, start. Bro. It's okay. You're allowed. <laughs> I had to start my own journey into both the training and the gear. And, and it, it, again, it's, it's not that I didn't have the stuff or I didn't have some level of knowledge, but you don't know what you don't know. You know, it, it's like I said, it's, it's not that... I didn't have the gun or the ammo. I, I bought the gun. I shot the gun. I knew, you know, but you don't know what you don't know when you don't know why this gauze versus that gauze or how to use an elastic bandage with the gauze or, you know, of all the tourniquets that are out there, why is one good and one's bad? Or why does it matter if I get the counterfeit or the name brand cat tourniquet? Or what do I do exactly with a pressure bandage? Uh, or why do I need shears at all? Can't I just use my pocket knife? And why, you know, I see gloves that come in different colors. Do I care what color? You know, and on and on and on it goes where you just don't know what you don't know. Um, so, the, you know, that, that's where Riley is. That's where I am. And that's where I was. And I, I'm also thinking about a student of ours. i going to wake up my computer over here. I'm thinking about a student of ours named uh, Mark. Um, Mark messaged us this week. 
uh, I guess it was last week, and said that throughout this whole summit, you know, for him, the journey kind of started from scratch. Mark had never bought a trauma kit. Mark had uh, never taken any medical training. Uh, Mark, you know, he, he said he had, he had taken some, you know, he had taken a class as a youth. Maybe it was, I don't know if it was part of school or Boy Scouts or something, but he had some rough first aid training. Uh, but first aid training is not trauma medicine. Uh, there's a big difference between, you know, doing CPR and stopping ma major, you know, massive blood loss. So anyway, you know, for him, it started from scratch and he had to go through it from the beginning. He had to, you know, get the training all, you know, from, from the beginning. He had to get the most updated information. He had to understand all the questions about the gear that I was talking about. So I, I guess the point of this is regardless if you are a Riley who you've been through tons of training and you've got tons of gear and you know exactly what to do with it. Um, at this point, Riley, you really, your only real restriction or barrier is uh, the money to buy all the stuff you want. You know, you, you really have a pretty high level of, of knowledge and competence. Um, or you, maybe you're, you would identify with me, you know, the Jacob of a year ago who had checked the box and bought a few things and kind of roughly felt like, yeah, I know what I'm doing. But you, didn't, you don't know what you don't know. And that's, that's where I was. Or maybe you identify with Mark. You know, Mark, uh, he, he, he just knew he didn't know anything. And he had to start from, from scratch. Regardless of where you are, um, you're in the right place. Because today we're talking about both the training and, and the gear. Yeah. yeah, I got to wake up my computer here. <laughs> you let your computer go to sleep. I did. I did. Hey, so, you know, actually, to, to some of what you're saying, and actually there's a comment too from Joe who's watching today. Uh, he said, you know, first aid equipment is useless if you don't know how to use it. And I was thinking that's, that's true. And also to that point, uh, low quality first aid equipment is also useless. Pretty darn. Uh, or it can be, you know, and so... The kit that you brought to the range with you that one time uh, was basically the kind of kit like I would almost expect to buy or find on Amazon. Right. Right. And there's a lot of Amazon, you know, vendors and stuff out there. This is nothing against Amazon per se, but just a lot of trauma kits that are on Amazon, from what I've seen, are really lacking a lot of ways. There's stuff that they put in those kits you don't really need. There's, there's stuff they put in the kits that arguably is needed, but is low quality. There's a, a tremendous amount of, uh, uh, what's the word? Not false, but uh, counterfeit. Counterfeit, thank you. Counterfeit tourniquets and things like that. And that's probably an even bigger concern because, you know, something like a, a tourniquet is so important because. It addresses one of it addresses a very simple thing, and that if you had this really bad cut on your leg or on your arm that's just bleeding profusely, we can shut that off. We can shut that bleeding off, and that fixes a huge problem. It's such a simple thing. If you know how to put a tourniquet on, tighten it down, cut off that that bleeding, then you know suddenly that dealing with that situation just becomes immensely a lot simpler, and so. You know, you buy a kit off of some other online source that you may not know who they are, or if they've even vetted the stuff that's in their kits, and you get a, a counterfeit tourniquet. I'll tell you, um, because just in the filming that Brian and I did, actually some of the some of the footage that we use is actually me putting on a, a, a counterfeit tourniquet. It's a blue one, but a training one. I don't necessarily see a problem with training with a counterfeit one if it's. A little bit less expensive to buy a training one and you can get some practice but uh <clears throat> i could tell a big difference because he puts a real one on my leg later on uh a genuine you know north american rescue generation seven tourniquet there is a huge difference between the amount of pressure you can generate between the fake one and the real one and i just see so many of these kids out there that have poor quality equipment in them so so these kits are are useless if one you don't really know how to use what's in them and number two, if you're getting crap stuff to begin with. Yeah, which can be a challenge if you're just starting out. Yep. Now, let, let's talk a little bit more about the training because that's where this conversation has to begin. Because training knowledge is always more important than gear. Uh, so, you know, fear, fear the man with the, with, the, with the bad gun that knows how to shoot it, right? Right. So let's start there. We, when we set out to do this summit, this training summit, and, and to put all this content out there for you guys for free, uh, we, we really thought, you know, in fact, it had been on our list for a year and a half or more, and we'd never tackled it, so we didn't feel like we had the right subject matter expert. And then Brian came along. Yeah. Uh, so we really felt like the timing was right because we had Brian, uh, Brian McLaughlin, Doc Mack, as, as he would be known from um, among his Marines. 
he brought the subject matter expertise that we had been waiting for to really wrap this up nicely. Uh, Brian, former Navy corpsman, for those of you who don't know, Navy corpsman is equivalent of an Army medic for the Navy slash Marines. He was deployed with Marines. Uh, he's been through EMT school twice, once it, when he was in the military, once as a civilian. He's, he's worked in an ER. This is his passion and his love is yeah. this, this topic. Yeah, you know, it's funny because Brian started working for us, what, two, a year and a half ago, two years ago? Uh, yeah. It's been a while. Yeah, about a year and a half. year and a half, maybe. And, you know, we kind of knew about some of Brian's background. Obviously, he applied for the job and, and he worked for us and worked with us. And, and but, but he's, he's a really humble guy and doesn't really talk a lot about himself, the things he's done. And the longer we've gotten, to, or the more we've gotten to know him over the longer that he's been with us, we're like, wow, actually, Brian knows, you know, quite a bit. And he's done a lot of, you know, pretty incredible stuff um, overseas in Afghanistan and stuff like that. And so as, as we got to know and understand who Brian is more and more, he really was uh, the guy to bring, you know, together with this new Launch Mountain Man Medical and, and film these training videos, as many of you have now seen up to this point. Uh, he, he's the real deal. And there's a difference between someone who's been formally trained uh, like myself or maybe you, and someone who's been in the field, on the battlefield, doing this while bullets are whizzing over your head. Mm -hmm. uh, that kind of wisdom can't be trained. It just has to come through experience. And so that was the missing component uh, that we understood. And it's funny, as you talk, as we were designing the kits and deciding what to put in them, and Brian would say, oh, we can't do that. Why not? Uh, because when you open that kit and bullets are flying over your head, you do this, and this flies, and you're like, oh, yeah, I never, never would have thought of that, right? And so that's those yeah. little things. Uh, so I, I think it's really important that you guys understand this. Now, the, the training, like I said, if there's two videos that are still available. You can go log in to the summit, concealedcarry.com forward slash summit. Uh, you can go still watch the final two of the 13 videos until the end of day tonight. And then you'll only have the last one available until the end of day tomorrow. But know that if you're a person who just wants to purchase all that content and have access to it, next week we'll be doing that. We'll be tying a bow on it. We'll be making it available to purchase. Uh, or, of course, we'll also be gifting it for free. Permanent access to all those training videos will be gifting it to everybody who purchased any of our kits during the summit, which, of course, will tie up at the end of this week. So I'd encourage you to keep that in mind relative to the training. Now, let's transition a little bit. Um, let's talk a little bit about the gear, Riley. Yep. We got a bunch of stuff in front of us. You guys can't see it, but we got this table right here with all sorts of, of goodies here. Yep. So uh, let's see here. Start with the pouch. Well, let's let's, no. let's start here. We're going okay. to start with kind of what I would call the uh, the principles, okay. the, the core things that we set out on. When when we design a product, guys, we're not willy-nilly about it. We're not just like grab this, shove this in. Uh, we really said, well, what are the guiding rules that we have to follow to make this work? And, and this is, of course, a collective conversation with several of us. Uh, Matthew was also on our committee, who some of you know, Matthew Marister, who's a former Marine, Marine. Mm -hmm. police police officer as well. Uh, he's been on, on the, he's been first on scene many a times uh, in medical emergencies. Yep. So we, we formed a committee of four people. We said, what matters? What's got to be the deal? And, and as we looked at competing products, uh, ultimately we determined there's kind of three things that, that we had to make some decisions about uh, that, that are going to set apart one trauma kit from the next. Okay. The first of those is definitely the carrier, the pouch. And we're going to come back and talk more about the, the pouch we, we, we put together that we're having manufactured here in a minute. The second are the components, the guts. We decided from the outset that we were going to have high quality name brand components because the decision had to be made. Should we make our own tourniquet? Should we make our own bandages? Should we make our own gauze? Or should we source an existing name brand product, which is going to cost us more, but it's proven, it's tested, it's approved for military use or whatever it might be. So that was a decision we had to make. We, we decided to not source our own uh, components. We decided to to go get existing proven components. And then the third guiding principle here was price. Uh, in fact, I remember uh, when, when we were having this conversation, I said, and we were looking at all the competing products, I said, what would it take for us to come to market with a trauma kit that we feel good about as a group that costs less than $50 retail? And it was one of those like, holy crap, can we do that kind of things? Uh, that sounds really like a high, high task. And of course, we didn't know until we started getting set up with, as distributors and dealers with all the various uh, companies like North American Rescue, H&H &H Medical, uh, Dynarex, et cetera. And we started to actually source the, the components. Then we come to discover that, yeah, we could we can do this. We could we could barely slide in there at under that $50 price point. So those those are some of the guiding principles. So I, I want to kind of talk through some of those things now. I want to start with uh, the carrier, the pouch, 
that we're having manufactured. Obviously, we don't sew these in-house. So we're having these manufactured. And then we're going to transition, talk a little bit about components and things like that. Yeah. So our pouch here, uh, pretty straight, straightforward, but there was a couple things that was important to us. One, we wanted it to be a relatively compact size. We wanted it to be a nice form factor. Uh, for instance, I mean, you, you could wear this on your belt or something uh, at, at the range or that sort of thing. Or if you wanted to put this on an already existing set of, uh, you know, like plate carriers or something, molly webbing on a backpack, whatever. We, we just didn't want it to be, and actually it looks wider here than what it really is because it's sort of folded up. But I mean, really that's that's your, your form factor right there. Pretty small, pretty trim, compact. It'll fit under the, the seat of your car a lot of times. It'll fit in a bag, it'll fit on the bag. It'll, you know, just a lot of options with how you can wear, use, and carry this pouch. Now, talking with Brian, uh, it was really important to him that we used a high quality zipper. Uh, now, many of you are probably familiar with a brand called YKK, which is one of the, pretty much the standard in the industry. Uh, we looked at sourcing uh, our bag with YKK zippers. Not that they're bad and not that we're total cheapskates, but it was going to be considerably more. And it was really important, again, that we find something that is good quality, high quality, but we were trying to get this base kit price under 50 bucks. Yeah. And so we went with, what was these SBS. zippers? SBS zippers. Uh, not as well known a brand, but we've tested these. Brian spent a good deal of time just really working and, and trying to abuse these. And researching, you know, what other, other companies and vendors have found. Yep. Yeah. And, you know, these, these are, I mean, some of you probably watch this thing, you're thinking, well, what's the big deal with the zippers? Well, we got to have this stay together. We don't want zippers, you know, coming apart, things flying apart when, when, you need to count on it, or you know, you're trying to unzip it and the zipper gets stuck. So we need to know that the zipper is reliable, that it works the way it needs to when we when we need it to work, and that things aren't falling apart. So that's why that's so important. And then inside the pouch, all kinds of different ways and options for you to stage your equipment inside of them. There's a couple of really big pouches or pockets in the back on each side here. Uh, there's a bunch of these little individualized slots. This is all elastic material here, so it kind of stretches and expands, allows you some flexibility in how you stage your equipment. You know, this this loop here is a little bit larger. These ones that are in front of that are also, uh, you know, kind of like a one inch wide webbing or, or, or uh, elastic band on top of like a two inch elastic band uh, on one side. Just, you know, a lot of different ways and options of how you can set this up. Uh, and so we want that flexibility. We want people to be able to customize kits to them uh, in the way they see best. Uh, we prepackage these and ship these out uh, in a kind of certain way. And, and that's a, a way that we think works pretty well, but certainly you're more than free and you have the options to reconfigure your kits as you see necessary. Or add components if you Absolutely. feel that there's something that's important to you. Yep. I mean, these, these pouches also have uh, molly straps to attach this to your bag or belt or whatever it might be. Um, they have a very generous, uh, Velcro receiving patch, is that the right term? Sure. Yeah, it's the, the soft uh, yeah, hook, loop. Yeah, it's the loop part of hook and loop. Yeah. So yep. you can, I think it's, a, I th if I'm remembering right, I think these are three inches wide and two inches tall. Yep. Uh, and, and they come with kind of a two inch square patch that's kind of a first aid looking patch. But if you, you know, if you wanted to move that to a side and, and put another patch on here, you could maybe you like a blood, blood type or type. Yeah, something like or that. Whatever. Yeah, that was, that was something we, we put some thought into. And of course, a nice grab handle uh, on these as well. So. Yeah, pouches like this often will sell, like you can go out and buy them from companies out there and you could spend in the low end, maybe $20, $25 for a lower quality bag uh, and pouches that are similar to this certainly sell out there for $40, $50 uh, on the high end. So it gives you some sense for the value. I mean, so we, we had a couple of people contact us and, and ask if the price of the, of the Sweetwater was just the pouch or if it came with the stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, because that's how well priced these are given the value. So we're, we're pretty stoked about these. Yep. These, the carrier. Uh, and, and I'll add that if you get this in the mail and you rip this thing open, you pull all the components out and stick it in an ankle carrier or some bigger, uh, you know, trauma kit pouch that you like to take to the range, and then you repurpose this for something else, that works. These are designed to be versatile. You know, it doesn't have to be a first aid pouch. You could reuse this and, and purpose it for something else too. And that, mm -hmm. that's really the way they're designed. Yep. All right. Let's get into the components, right? Absolutely. Let's do it. All right. This is going to be fun. So uh, what I'm going to do is I have a, in my hand the Yellowstone. This is the one we're going to give away today. One of you lucky people is going to win the Yellowstone here. And we're going to just kind of pull this thing open and go through all the individual components that are in here, why we chose these, why we sourced these particular components, 
uh, and obviously a little bit of, of what they're for and what they do. So I think I'm just going to start on the left and pull stuff out here, Riley, and hand it to you. Can I just say really quick, I love this comment. Dr. Al is here. Great, uh, as I think he's saying, his great summit. Great teacher with multiple experiences. Thank you. God bless you and your group. Chaplain, Deputy Sheriff, Dr. Al. All right. That's awesome. Dr. Al, thank you for thank your you. feedback and making us feel a little warm and fuzzy inside. Wow. And we're glad you enjoyed the content. Yep. All right. All right. <clears throat> Let's start with this guy. All right. So uh, in the L-Stone kit, as Jacob was saying, uh, one of the first things you'll see, and this is actually a step up from the base kit, but uh, Quick Lock. And this is, uh, of course, a well-known brand. It's actually made by Z Medica, which makes a lot of medical uh, products and different things. But Quick Claw is the is a famous brand that I mean, it's kind of like Kleenex. It's like the Kleenex right? of facial tissues. <clears throat> right. So, uh, well-known product. Uh, their use of kaolin, I think, is is what it's called. And the way it works with to clot the blood, there's no uh, uh, he excess heat that's generated from that clotting action. That's a really key thing because you're not. I mean, someone's already hurt when you're using something like this. If we're causing them greater pain by using a product, that's less than ideal, you know? So uh, I think Quick Claw is a great product. This is, uh, <clears throat> there are other options or other- Hemostatic uh, bandages. Yeah, yeah, I mean, well, they, they even have the Z-Fold. This is not the Z-Fold variety. This is a rolled gauze, uh, but we do sell the Z-Fold in our store. So that's all, you know, another alternative you can, if you want to upgrade. And uh, why the Z-Fold? Well, it's a little bit, I think easier to work with to deploy, sure. But uh, but this is good stuff here. Uh, most of you chances are probably not carrying quick clot. And I'll tell you at the very least. I mean, ideally this would be used where you're stuffing it into a a, a wound that's bleeding pretty good, and you want to try to get it in there, get it in contact right from the with the source of the blood, and begin clotting things right there at the source. But <clears throat> if you're not comfortable with wound packing or anything like that, at the very least, if if we can get things slowed down with a tourniquet. We can, you know, just take this and, and put it on top of the wound or stuff it as best we can into the wound. It's better than nothing. And then get a, you know, pressure dressing or something wrapped around it. But Quick Clot, I think, is an essential kit uh, item. So it's in our Yellowstone yeah. kit. Many of you may be familiar with Combat Gauze, which right. is the military equivalent product made by the same company, same product. It's just this is the one that's allowed to be sell, sold to civilians. Yeah. Uh, but it's, and, and can I touch on that really quick? Yeah, sure, sure. Um, you know, we're we are now a recognized distributor or whatever of, of, of the quick clot, quick clot brand, uh, and they take very seriously uh, their products and and who could be sold what, uh, and so it's important to us that we play by their rules. And again, this is what we can sell to civilians, and so that's why you're going to see this yeah. instead of the combat guys. Very impressive company. They, they they do have competing products out there, but ultimately, talking to Brian and other experts in the field, we decided to get the the most proven, most used product out there, yep. which was Quick Clot. Uh, so there you go. That's the there Quick Clot. All right, let's keep rolling in here. This is the North American Met Rescue Mini Responder 4-inch ETD Emergency Trauma Dressing. And now North American Rescue is a brand you're going to hear a couple times because we, we source a couple of products from North American Rescue. They've also been at this for a while. And this uh, pressure bandage, uh, or, or ETD as they call it, is pretty awesome. It is. I mean, it's awesome because not only what it allows you to do uh, as far as uh, very quickly put together an effective dressing, but it does so in a very compact size. And again, something that was important to us is put together these two initial kits, the Sweetwater and the Yellowstone, with these with, with some sort of pressure dressing. So kind of like a Israeli dressing is another term a lot you might be familiar with. And Israeli dressings are great. Uh, they work very effectively. This is basically an Israeli dressing, but miniaturized. And that's really important because it would be really challenging for us to fit the Israeli dressing in this current kit. Uh, and it might push something else that we thought was also needed out. Well, there's a trend uh, so. there, frankly. You'll, you'll find that almost every component we've sourced for this kit, where there was an option for us to get a smaller, more compact version, we basically have done that, yeah. uh, where we weren't compromising the integrity of the product. Uh, because we wanted to deliver a, a more compact thing for a couple of reasons. One, because we want the end kit we're going to ship you to be compact so you can put it uh, anywhere. But also because we know a lot of you will repurpose this, this stuff. You'll pull some of these components out. You'll shove them in an ankle carrier or into a cargo pocket at the range or something else that 
frankly requires very compact components. So, yeah. Sorry to interject. No, that's fine. You know, and again, I just kind of teased that there's going to be more stuff coming from Mountain Man Medical, including kits that probably have larger components, larger versions of pressure dressings. But again, to get the the effectiveness that this dressing is and its size factor, this, that's that was really important to us. And this is a very effective dressing uh, that is in a very small package, so we can fit it in the kit. We can still fit, you know, our, our, our cat tourniquet in there if we need to, if we're, if we're upgrading that to that cat and all that kind of stuff. So it was really important to us that we have a good, effective dressing in a kit that is a good size. Yeah, so something else that you'll notice, uh, North American Rescue has, I think they have this patented or trademarked or something fancy, but yeah. they have these okay. red tear... I can't remember what they call it, like mm -hmm. red tip terror things or whatever, but yeah. they're basically fancy, cool packaging that allows you to rip this open in a way that's predictable, that it always tears the right way and gets you access to the product quickly. And, and something else that's noteworthy, and this is true about the quick clot too, we didn't talk about this, but you'll notice on the back of the quick clot and on the back of the pressure bandage are picture illustrated instructions. Now yeah. we hope that you will be consuming the video content we put out there and so you know how to use these products. But maybe it's someone else who's ripping open your kit because you're unconscious. And I suppose in a, in a pinch, they could follow the uh, pictures on the back of either of these products. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's not rocket science. Using this guy, really not that difficult. No, no. Put, put gauze pad on the wound, wrap this around, you know, tightly, but not too tight. Sure. And uh, yeah, and then clip it close. Yeah, and, and pretty, something pretty simple, I'll, I'll add one last thought about this mini uh, ETD from North American Rescue. It has both hook and loop closure mm -hmm and clip closure. So if you've yeah. ever used like an Israeli style bandage, it has kind of a clip closure that's meant, that's kind of how it, it seals at the end. Uh, this has both options, or, or you, you could deploy both or use one or the other. Well, it's super convenient because you're able to kind of close that bandage uh, right away with the hook and loop. Uh, so you can get it kind of in place and then, because sometimes fiddling with those clips is a little bit tricky. So it kind of helps it stay, you get it wrapped, helps it stay in place, and then you can put those clips in place and you're good to go. Precisely. Yeah. All right, we're gonna get into some smaller components here on this on this my left side of, of this kit we have open here. So we have here a mini marker, yep. permanent marker, not rocket science. So this think Sharpie, but not name brand Sharpie. Yeah. We are not licensed or affiliated to sell Sharpies. <laughs> so this is a generic uh, permanent black marker. marker. Yep. Uh, this, this is an important component. I mean, for us, it's not an expensive component. It doesn't cost a lot of money for, uh, for us to source it or include it in the kit, but it can be very valuable because when you are administering aid to someone, it's important to take notes. Certainly, we all know that when you put on an app, a tourniquet, you want to note the time that that tourniquet was applied. But you also might want to note uh, locations of things. You know, if, if, if an EMT is going to show up and take over care from you and transport an individual to a primary care facility, them, you know, having some notes, so whether it be on, on the forehead or wherever you've written it down, uh, hey, there's a tourniquet on the left leg, uh, applied at 4 o'clock p.m. or whatever it might be, that can go a long way to make sure the information is getting to the right people without the telephone game effect of it being lost or, or you know, changed. Yep, black marker. Black marker. All right, then we have two pair of emergency gloves. They're yep. bound. Nitro gloves. Yep, nitro gloves. So latex free, no latex. These are non, what's the word? Non Hypoallerg hypoallergenic. That. So, you know, they're, they're, they're rubber, non-sterile uh, gloves. We specifically chose black, and we specifically have uh, sourced them and put them in a way that they're wrapped in this compact, folded uh, form. And specifically got a thickness that's not so thin that it tears easily. So, right. so these are your, your good quality nitrile gloves. Uh, you know, black because, one, it looks cool, but also... Um, you know, something I've noticed, and I've noticed this too in situations, uh, again, I've been involved in a number of, of trauma type situ situations, including where I've been seriously hurt. And when you got a lot of bleeding going on, uh, some colors show that blood like very obviously. And that can almost be unsettling to the patient or the casualty that's being taken care of. Um, I, I like black and prefer black because it, it doesn't show uh, the gore quite as easily as say like blue or purple uh, or white or, yeah. or white. And so that's kind of why I like black uh, because I think, you know, again, we're, we're trying to assist somebody and it's best if we keep them as calm as we can. And it's easier to keep them calm when they don't feel like, you know, they're bleeding out all over the place. Yeah. So. And I'll add that 
this is there's two of them in every kit we sell there's two pair of gloves so four gloves right two pair this this yep. was also important to us this was an insight that brian uh, brought to the table early on in the conversation that we all thought made a lot of sense uh, because there could be another person responding with you helping to helping to, to provide aid you could rip a pair uh, and, and you have a backup now yep. uh, and, and it's just you know a great great way to yep. have it's, it doesn't cost us I mean, a lot but two in here I, I wear gloves like this all the time because of like working on uh, my, my vehicles at home or sure. cleaning my guns uh, you know to keep my hands clean and most of the time I tear the first glove I put on <laughs> so you pull that off and you have to grab another one so that's that's really a huge thing you know a lot of kits you might just have a single pair of gloves uh, you tear the one glove and you're kind of kind of screwed so here you got a second pair as a backup, or as Jacob mentioned, you can hand it off to somebody else that comes up to, to assist you. Trauma shears. So yeah. this is definitely one of those, I didn't know what I didn't know things. And if you'd asked me a year ago, I'd be like, yeah, they're just scissors at an angle. <laughs> but that's well, not the case. They're kind of serrated a little bit, right? Which helps with, uh, with cutting some of the trickier, you know, heavier, thicker materials, fabrics and things. Uh, I mean, we, so we, we went with a compact size. There's obviously a little bit, you know, bigger ones you can get. I think these are considered a four inch and the others are six inch or something, something like that. that. Yeah. I don't know, really know how they measure. I mean, really it's got about a two inch blade, but uh, uh, we tested these out considerably. Uh, we sourced these directly and wanted to make sure they work and that they're legit. Uh, we tested these on heavy, thick uh, clothing, on blue jeans, cutting through the thickest seams. More, more we wanted to make layers. sure that if you needed to use these, that you're gonna have no issue just you know, getting clothes out of the way so you can get at a wound or or see what's going on with somebody when you know when they have a problem. Yep, yep. And they obviously have the flat protection, the safety, dilio, safety, safety thing, blade so you don't or cut up your, your patient. Mm -hmm. um, as you mentioned, they're compact, tested. We feel really good and warm and fuzzy about these. Yep, it's it's really key. I mean, you kind of alluded to earlier, you know, why you would use trauma shears as opposed to just using like a pocket knife, uh, and, and that's the why because you know one of the first. Uh, uh, creeds of you know of a, of a medical professional is like do no harm. Like right? my job is to fix you. So you know if I stab you accidentally trying to cut off your clothes, you're already bleeding from other wounds, and now I just you know it's a problem, right? So we want to we want to be granted we're not professionals. I'm not a medical professional. You're not a medical professional. We're not talking to a lot of medical professionals, but we still want to be you know professional about how we help people when we do decide we need to step up and and do that. So use the right gear. Yep. Yep. All right, we have here some gauze. Uh, in the Yellowstone kit, there are two of these. So I, I'm, I kind of have two in my hand here. I'll pass yep. one off. Yep. Uh, this is a two inch by five yard uh, rolled gauze. Uh, this is made by Dynarex. Dynarex has been making medical supplies and equipment like this for a little over 50 years now. And a well known quality manufacturer of said products. They're, they're good people. We just had a meeting with them this last week, and uh, they really care about making quality equipment. Uh, and, uh, you know, an American company based in New York City area. Yeah, somewhere in New York. Yeah, somewhere. I know they're big Yankees fans. Yes, official Sorry, partners. Don't, don't hold that against them or against us. Uh, Orangeburg, New York. There it is right there. And so, uh, yeah, uh, we were really excited to have a partnership with Dynarex to be able to source uh, some of their products for a very low cost, uh, which, again, allows us to pass that on to you and put together these kits for low cost. Yep. We have in here your what I would call your traditional elastic wrap bandage. Mm -hmm. uh, think Ace Wrap, but uh, this is not the company, not that brand. This is a, a you know, this is the facial tissue of the Kleenex world, right? So this is just an elastic wrap. Um, these are sourced, however, from a name brand company that makes a really high quality product. Uh, we chose this one for a couple reasons. One, uh, good good size. Uh, it's also two inches by. I can't remember how long. Some ridiculously long amount. And it, it, but what, we, what we really like about this is the closure. A lot of these wraps that you guys are familiar with, they have those horrible metal clips that you're trying to use to, clo to, to fasten the bandage after you've wrapped it. This is hook and loop uh, closure. So really easy to secure in place and make sure it doesn't come off. Yeah, just wrap it and then you just push the, the end back onto itself. I mean, it just, yeah, it sticks. It works great. There we go. Yep. All right, let's talk about the SWAT-T tourniquet. Yeah, the SWAT-T tourniquet comes in every kit. Uh, this is a great multi-use item. You'll hear actually Brian in the Trauma Summit videos uh, say that sort of thing, you know, multi-use, multi-use. Because multi-use is really key because an important uh, quality of a medic or someone that's providing uh, trauma care is being able to adapt and solve problems. Uh, and SWAT-T 
you know, we've actually gotten some questions from people like why uh, why this is included as opposed to say just going right to a cat tourniquet uh, in in a base kit. Well, obviously, number one, there there is some cost. There's a cost difference. Sure, well, sure. That's actually less the less important factor factor. It's the fact that this is a very useful item because this can be actually used to create a pressure dressing. Uh, for instance, we talked about how you could apply, say, quick clot, and maybe you needed the pressure dressing somewhere else already, <clears throat> dealing with another wound. And, well, you could take some of this rolled gauze and put that on top of a wound and use a SWAT T and create a pressure dressing with this. You, you wouldn't want to perhaps wrap it as tightly as you would when you're trying to use it as a tourniquet. <clears throat> but the point is, I mean, it's, this is advertised first as a tourniquet. I'm giving you some examples of non-tourniquet uses because I think it's very valuable in that sense. You can use this to create a saline and to put over somebody's shoulder, you know, say they've got a broken collarbone or something, some other injury with their arm. We could create a sling to kind of provide some support, uh, which is also important to, to, you know, support some of those injuries and also help someone with comfort when they're already in so much pain. Uh, also, uh, we use this in one of the training videos to show how to make an improvised uh, splint. So if you had a broken bone or something, we, I think we used a hammer. We just we, we wanted to grab kind of everyday items. We grabbed a hammer, and then Brian grabbed the SWAT T and uses that to make an improvised splint. And then finally, again, it is a tourniquet. Uh, now, here's the thing. It's, this is an elastic tourniquet. So the, the, the key is if it's going to function properly as a tourniquet, we want to get that pressure applied as wide as we can over an area. The wider, the better as far as preventing necrotic tissue from developing. The tourniquet's got to stay on for a little while. It'll also be more comfortable for the casualty. But these SWAT teeth specifically, they build on themselves as that pressure continues to wind round and round. And the center will be the greatest point of that pressure. And then it, it gets less, uh, uh, you know, it, it, it just gets more gradual as you go out from the center of, of where this is applied. But you want those wraps to be, you, you want to be pulling those wraps. You know, it has instructions both written on the tourniquet itself as well as on the packaging where you'll see kind of these circular and square and oval and diamond shapes. And your goal is to turn those uh, ovals into circles, diamonds into squares, and vice versa as you're stretching this around. When this is applied properly, it can be very effective. Uh, I have self-applied and received er, and achieved full blood occlusion, uh, you know, in, in my arm, uh, testing for pulse, that sort of thing. So if it's not applied correctly, then, you know, we, we got a little bit of a problem. So it is, it is something that's maybe not quite as simple to use as, say, a cat. We'll get to that here in a moment. But it's a very valuable multi-use, multi-purpose tool. And at the very base level, you know, someone that buys just the sweet water kit and this, and they and they only have this. Hey, you know what? You're you're on your way to a great start with having some good quality gear. And make sure you know how to use this and work with this effectively. And I would encourage you to buy a second one. Maybe buy a training one. The training ones are always colored in blue, and get some practice with self-applying that because it does. That's the trickiest thing with the with the SWAT T tourniquet is self-applying that. Yeah, um, yeah, you know, one handed, which is going to be typically where you've got like an arm wound, uh, because then you've got just the one arm to use. So typically, you got to take a take an end of the SWAT T, stick it in your teeth, and you see us do this in the video. If you're applying it to your leg, it's not 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 as big a deal. It's pretty easy to you know, assuming you you have both of your hands that you can use. But a uh, great multi-purpose item, SWAT T goes in every kit that we sell. Yeah, we like the SWAT T for all those reasons. I don't know that I have a lot to add except to say that this also fit the price point. Again, as a company, it was important to us to put out a kit that was affordable, and the SWAT T retails retails for about 18 bucks. Mm -hmm. And so it allowed us to put a tourniquet in the kit that we, we know is, is, is good, that it's quality, that it's made by a reputable business, um, that it's been tested, that the industry has accepted it as a, as a good product. But it's also multi-use, so you can use for other things like Riley said. Mm -hmm. uh, so do we think it's the best tourniquet on the market? We don't, but we do feel that it is a good base product, a good ba base tourniquet to have in your kit as a core essential. And one thing that we've done, I think that's different than any other company I've seen out there, is most companies that are selling trauma kits out there, they have tourniquet upgrade options. That's a very normal standard thing that we've seen from all of our competitors. Yep. You'll pay X dollars and upgrade from this tourniquet to that tourniquet. 
But what we've done is we've set it up so that if you add an additional, you know, add a, or upgrade to a different tourniquet, which we'll talk about momentarily, you don't get, this one doesn't come out of the kit. And it doesn't matter if you add the, the optional cat tourniquet to our kits, you still get the SWAT. We don't take it out. We don't, we don't upgrade it. We add an additional tourniquet, which means that if you did that, you would have two tourniquets in your kit. Two tourniquets, which two, 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 you know, two is one, one is none sort of thing, right? But also, yeah. again, going back to the multi-purpose use right. of this. So a lot of value there. Yep, yep. All right, we're getting close to the end here. We have our twin chest seals. Yep. Also from North American mm -hmm. Rescue. Get the high fin uh, name, you know that that uh, North American Rescue has been known for for a number of years. Uh, chest seals, we think, are really important. Uh, number one, they're not that complicated to use. You know, basically, this is used to plug a hole somewhere in somebody's torso from neck to navel. Right? Uh, you got a hole somewhere. It's not a bad idea to, to take one of these chest seals and apply it. The great thing about these high fin ones is they come actually with a little piece of gauze inside there. That's important because when you're going to apply the chest seal, you want to wipe that wound area right before you apply this this uh, chest seal, uh, so that you get you know things as clean and as dry as we can. I mean, these are made with a pretty sticky substance. It, it tends to work pretty well, but it, it's great because you open one of these up. Again, it's got that red identifier that uh, is patented by North American Rescue, so you can see right away where to tear. Open this up, pull it out. You'll see that piece of gauze. You want to have your hand or something already, ideally, pressing onto that that wound, onto that hole. Uh, you know, to keep things. Uh, you know, to to not only keep uh, fluids or whatever from coming out, uh, making more of a mess. But uh, again, we want to keep that chest pressure uh, where it's supposed to be. Uh, get this opened up. Get the gauze. Wipe things away. Stick the chest seal right on. Really simple to use. Now. Tension pneumothorax, which is basically where you have a, a collapsed lung and a decompression of the chest wall due to a penetrating injury, is uh, second most common uh, uh, or second leading cause of death on the battlefield. Uh, depending on you ask, some people say th the third, but Brian, you know, has been there and experienced it. He says it's the second most common uh, uh, thing that leads to death on the battlefield. Uh, you know, if you're talking about a typical civilian scenario, Jacob, where someone is responding to a, a, an accident, to a shooting or something like that. I mean, it takes sometimes a while for someone to get in critical danger of dying from a tension pneumothorax. Sure, sure. However, I can think of some very specific examples where this could be very critical, and that might be a mass casualty event where, you know what, sometimes emergency services are so overwhelmed, it might be a while before they can get you the help you need to be able to deal with that tension pneumothorax. Uh, in such a way that, you know, that, um, yeah, so a chest seal, good idea to have. So these are included in uh, the Yellowstone kit. And we're, we're pretty thrilled about this particular one because you get two of them and they're not packaged together. They're packaged separately. They are attached, yep. you know, by a little perforation here. But I could rip this apart. We'd have two of them. Uh, we did. We like this because a lot of the other options on the marketplace, even some of the very high quality name brand ones, uh, it was one package with two chest seals inside. So you rip it open, you have two. That's fine if you need to, but if you only need one, you just waste the chest seal because it's no yep. longer sterile. So we like this option because if you only need one, great. Just deploy one and you still have one more that stays sterile in its packaging. Uh, but they're, you know, they're connected and they're sold as a twin pack. So if you have a, an entry and an exit or you have two entries, whatever it might be, you do have two available to you. Yep. Yeah. And of course, it's available a la carte on the website as well, aren't they? Yes. So if someone yep. wants to add more Everything chest here. seals, uh, you can do that as well. So, uh, I mean, that's pretty much everything in the kit. I mean, uh, yeah, as you can let's... see, we've got a lot of products from North American Rescue. We've got products from H&H. &H, we got products from Z-Medica and Quick Clot. Uh, we're really, and, and uh, Dynarex, we're really proud of the partnerships we've built and the pricing we've been able to secure, which again is, is so key to our mission. You know, why do we, it's not about trying to create something that's cheap. It's about trying to create something that is excellent quality, high value, but low cost to put these in more hands like people out you know, like you watching here today. Yep. So the difference between the Yellowstone and Sweetwater, and then let's talk a little bit about the cat tourniquet, and then I know that we're getting close to the Q&A. So as you have questions, don't worry, we're going to get to you here pretty soon. Yep. Everything we've just shown you is what you get in the Yellowstone kit by default for $79.99. That's the, the current pricing. That said, the what, what we take away basically to create a Sweetwater is we remove the chest seals, we remove the quick clot, 
and we remove one of the two rules of gauze. So this is it. This, this is what makes the Yellowstone not the sweet water. Yeah, right here's the sweet, sweet water right here. Yep. So you'll see just the one rolled gauze. You still have the ACE bandage. Uh, we still have the compression bandage or uh, pressure dressing. We still have the SWAT T tourniquet. We just don't have the chest seals and the quick clot and one roll of, of gauze. Right, so the gloves, so, markers, shears, still yep. comes in the same pouch. Yeah, I mean, some people probably look at that and go, well, that's quite a bit of cost difference between the, you know, from 48 whatever dollars to 79.99. Well, quick cloud alone, I mean, just go online and go go to buy some. You'll see it's it's not very cheap stuff. <laughs> no, yeah, the retail, I think this is like a $24, $25 product. Um, um, then, of course, you have the chest seals, which are not cheap either. Yep. yep. So that's the nature of the differences between these kits. Now, a common question, of course, people are like, do we add the cat tourniquet? So, you know, rather, this one's not in packaging here, so let's yep. rip it out. Sure. We'll talk a little bit about the cat, and while yep. he's doing that, I'm going to package this stuff into the sweet water so that we're going to have ourselves a, another Yellowstone and then we'll add this in here. Yep, absolutely. So this is the CAT tourniquet made by North American Rescue Generation 7. Uh, you know, this is the industry standard as far as tourniquets go. Uh, I also use and have the soft tee wide tourniquets. Brian's also a fan of those. He's used those actually in the field um, as, as a corpsman. Uh, the, but they're both great products. Uh, they're both windless style uh, tourniquets. Now, specific to the cat, uh, I actually saw a question a little while ago, so I'm going to go ahead and kind of answer one question. As since I'm talking about tourniquets right here, right now, is how do I tell a fake from a real one? And I'll tell you this much: that uh, you know, North American Rescue has been ripped off quite a bit with their their tourniquet design, uh, and so that they, they, they keep they continue trying to do everything they can to make it more difficult for companies to tool up to put, you know, to uh, build molds and, you know, build their own version of the cat tourniquet. So you'll see, first of all, in the Gen 7s, and I haven't seen these on the, on the uh, uh, I keep trying to say, I don't know what I keep trying to say. I, I'm struggling with the, word, with the word counterfeit. With the fake ones, we'll stick with fake. Uh, I've not seen the word cat right here on this buckle molded into that. Cat is also molded into the windlass. Uh, you'll also see that the latest Gen 7 is a very stout, very, it's a, it's a thicker windlass than what you'll see on a lot of the fake tourniquets out there. Another key thing is if you look on the back side of the tourniquet, there's this plastic uh, plate uh, that is right below the windlass. And you'll see right there, CAT in, in big lettering uh, with some other identifying information, uh, including their address to you know, North American Rescue and everything. Uh, actually, Cat Resources LLC, but it's part of North American Rescue. Uh, and uh, also, too, the, the, this little uh, windless securing tab, uh, the latest generation is a kind of a grayish color as opposed to white. Uh, so that's another key identifier. Uh, those are probably the, a couple of the big things. I mean, look, look for a cat molded into the buckle, into the windless, the back of this plastic plate, uh, the gray uh, Velcro securing tab thing. Um, it also says it on this strap somewhere. And also, right, thank you, yes, along with the NSN number, which is an identifier uh, for government contracts and things like that. So, yeah, look for that as well. Uh, all those identifying features, like typically with the fake ones, you might see even a marking sometimes that looks similar uh, or maybe some other identifying features that might look like a cat uh, feature, but you won't see all these things all together in one tourniquet. Uh, so the price is going to be the other giveaway. Yep. I mean, the the cat yes. tourniquet from North American Rescue retails for twenty nine ninety nine. That's and it's just what it is. They, they don't allow you to sell it for right. less than that, right? Right. So anyone that they are doing business with is restricted on how cheap they can sell it. So if you're paying less than twenty nine bucks for the tourniquet, it's not a cat. It's a yep. counterfeit. And we've done some exhaustive testing with some of these tourniquets to see how much worse they are. And and I you can go read the article and see all the pictures on and video on our website. Short story is. They're worse enough that you don't dare trust your your life to them. It's not one of those things where, well, it, it, it's good enough. It's, it's, it's not. It's not. It really isn't. Again, from personal experience and having fake ones applied on me, you cannot generate enough tension to 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 occlude full full yeah. blood flow. You'll turn that windlass for a long time and still not get there. It, it almost feels like it starts turning into an elastic band. It just kind of keeps winding and winding, and while Elastic bands get tighter. It's true, but it just it doesn't totally do what it's supposed to do. So, 
buy genuine, you know, buy from a trusted source, I, I would say we're a trusted source because we're sourcing these directly from North American Rescue. They're legit. Uh, they're, there's, we're not trying to find some other third party supplier that magically gives us a better price. Uh, that, that, that sort of thing doesn't exist because if it does, you're probably getting a counterfeit. Uh, I would strongly advise you from buying things on Amazon because I've seen some listings that I suspect are fake and are using images to make it look more authentic than it is. But they'll even put the cat or something yes. in there. Uh, yes. So, so yeah, you got to be, be so, cautious. Yep. There you go. That's so cat. if you buy the cat and that, because oh, I saw yep. a question here, so I want to know, can I fit the cat in the pouch? And the answer is yes. There's a couple of ways you can do it. My preferred spot is actually right back here behind this elastic wrap. Mm -hmm. I'm going to shove this in, get my elastic wrap back in. It's kind of hard to do, like holding it in my lap. Normally I'd have a setting Works on Works better table. on a table. Yeah, so there we go. So now this is the Yellowstone with cat tourniquet. And as you can see, it's tight, but it fits. There you go. All right. It fits. So now let's let's just give a quick summary here. So for those of you who want a reminder, by the way, you can find all these kits for sale at concealedcarry.com forward slash trauma kits. Yep. So go there if you're like, just tell me where to buy the thing. Like, yes, you can give us money. Just go buy it there. So let's give you a quick summary. The Sweetwater kit right now during this during this event through the end of this week, $48.22. The Yellowstone, which is basically the same as the Sweetwater, you just add the quick clot. You add the chest seals and you add one more roll of gauze, $79.99 during this event. Either of these, you can add the cat tourniquet, the combat application tourniquet. We all call it the cat. So you can add the cat to either of them for an additional $27, which is a good deal because it says we all know these normally sell for $29. We're not allowed to sell these for less than the $29 unless it's in a kit. Then we can do whatever we want. So you can add this to the kit as we've done with this one in my hand for an additional $27. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's what that looks like there. Yep. Now, a couple of thoughts that I think are important. These are some of the more common questions we've been getting over the last week and a half about these kits. Um, <laughs> you know, unlike a lot of our competitors, when you buy these from us, you're not paying a premium to have us assemble this. We, there are definitely companies out there who that's the case. But with us, it's the opposite. If you were to go and purchase all these individual components from Amazon or directly from their sources, and then build this kit yourself, you would pay more. Uh, you, you know, as opposed to you uh, saving money, you'd actually pay more. We're, we're saving you money by putting it together on your behalf. In fact, I, I did some math on this. For the Sweetwater, which we're currently selling for $48.22, if you went and you bought all the individual components yourself, it would cost you $79.21. So 80 bucks is more than 50. Yep, that's to buy the Sweetwater. That's the Sweetwater. That's our Correct. base kit. The Yellowstone, okay, here's the numbers. If you went out and bought each of the individual components for the Yellowstone and put it together yourself, you would pay $116.18 as opposed to what we sell for, $79.99. Yep. So big difference between 100 and call it 15 bucks and 80. So we're saving you money by putting these together and selling them to you as a kit. And of course, you might find things that you want to add to your kits. Our, our long-term plan is to have some larger kits with more things like some, some things for burns and some other things like that. Right now, this is what we put together. If you want to add to it, you can, but we're confident you can't find a comparable kit with similar components, uh, name brand components, for less money. In fact, we, we, we price match this from the beginning. From day one of this summit, we've told people, if you can find a comparable option out there that's cheaper, we'll meet the price. And we've not had a single person yet contact us mm -hmm. and call us out on that because you can't beat the price. Yeah, I think so. All right, so... Last thought here is we have had a lot of questions from people who want to know, well, how many of these should I get? And uh, we're in this, we're, this is a little bit of a bias question um, because we sell them. But I think it's worth just quickly thinking about this. And this is going to vary by lifestyle. Uh, you and I both have young families. We have children. You have more, more than double the number of kids I'd have. Uh, but we both have young families with children. Um, you know, so we have different lifestyles than, say, my parents or somebody like that who is an empty nester and all the kids moved on. So you need to think a little bit about how many kits you need, but let me give you a couple of thoughts here, and Riley, I'll let you chime in as well, of course. I think it's important to think about your home defense strategy. I'm guessing you have a fire extinguisher that's pretty close to the kitchen because you know that when there's a fire in your kitchen, you don't want to traverse the house to get the fire extinguisher. 
you want to think about your trauma kits that way. So I think you need to think about the size of your home, maybe how many people live in the home, and you need to stage at least one, if not more, trauma kits in the home. And in my case, I can tell you my home, we have kind of a safe room uh, where we would retreat in the case of certain types of emergencies. So we definitely have a trauma kit in that safe room. And then we have an additional one on a different level of the house. So that almost if you are, you are in that house, a trauma kit is not more than, you know, a minute or two away. I mean, it's, you know, I would say probably within 20 meters or so you could get to a trauma kit in my home. So I think that's an important thought about the home. Where else, Agreed. Riley, might someone want a trauma kit? Well, in your vehicle. Yeah. Uh, and, and every vehicle. So if you got two vehicles, three vehicles, we'll have two or three kits because you just, I mean, to think that, well, I'll always make sure that I grab a kit and put it in this vehicle when I drive that vehicle. That's, you know, I think that's wishful thinking. So I would just have a kit in every vehicle that I own. Uh, number two, I'd have one with me, perhaps, right? I've got one in my backpack that goes with me pretty much everywhere, uh, all the time. And I make sure people that know me know, too, that this lower section on my backpack, this little pouch, that's a trauma kit. I tell the folks at my church, uh, hey, if there's an emergency, like normally this backpack's somewhere close to me, but if for some reason, if something goes down, something happens, Find my backpack. If that's my backpack, bring it. All right, and and, and folks know. Yeah. So yeah. So every car, because this is about you too. This is about your loved ones, right? So if I'm driving my car, my spouse is driving her car, mm-hmm. whatever, that's something to think about. I also yeah. have one with me all the time. Uh, the idea is have to one never in the range bag. Definitely in the Sorry, range you bag. That one. Uh, if you have a bug out bag or something like that, that'd be another place. Get I think home you bag. Want to have one. Get home bag. Might be the same thing as the one you keep in your vehicle. It right? might be sure. Uh, I have kind of a whole pile of gear in my garage, as I would call like my outdoors stuff. Just camping, hiking, backpacking, um, you know, fishing, hunting, all that stuff. So I kind of have some some core uh, gear set aside for that. So a trauma kit and that gear would make sense to me too. Yep. Now, this is all assuming, of course, that you have no fi- financial restrictions. <laughs> I mean, if you had yep. unlimited money, the answer is figure out how many you need and go buy all a bunch of Yellowstones uh, with cat tourniquets. Most of you will probably, you know, like the average American, have some financial restrictions. So I think you want to think through that strategy now as to how many you need and where you'd like to stage them. And then, of course, as money allows, buy what you can. Mm -hmm. And if that maybe means getting a Yellowstone today and a Sweetwater today, and then later you're going to add some components to that Sweetwater, or maybe it's uh, getting, you know, just one Sweetwater today. Maybe that's all you can do. That's fine. What I can tell you is that you're never going to beat these prices. And... Our prices are going up after this event, so it's worth taking advantage of now, not only because you're going to get the lower price, but also, of course, as we said before, you're going to be able to take advantage of all the training videos that you'll have permanent access to. But we promise that we will always be as fair as we can. With our, I mean, like we say, he says our pricing is going to go up. It's it's we're not we still time. intend on being the most affordable kits that you can find anywhere. Yeah, yeah, and we'll With always- With quality stuff. We'll always have the price match guarantee if you can find a comparable kit. You know, I had someone, a student actually came through concealed carry class, send me uh, an email saying that, you know, after my talking about trauma kits in, in the concealed carry class, that he went, he, he wanted to buy one. And I said, hey, you know, we, we're, we're putting these together and here's the price, it's gonna be awesome. And he ended up buying one from Amazon. And he was so he was really excited, which I, I a part of me ha- hated, uh, you know, poo pooing on his party, on his you know, on his parade, you know, for like, dude, like I'm glad you got a trauma kit, but I could tell right away, it, you know, had a fake tourniquet in it, it had uh, all kinds of problems with what was in there, uh, and I was looking at the price of that kit compared to what you get with one of ours with name brand quality components, yeah, it's it's night and day, and, and our price is really not that different from a cheap counterfeit kit guys you can um, we won't call it names because we don't do it but you can go find a, a competitor out there or two or three that have a kit that's comparable to the yellowstone not quite as good as the yellowstone that costs 250 dollars yeah. uh, i promise you can find that it, it, it's it's quite amazing to us how much margin some of these companies have and that's their business if they can sell it, that's fine but we're not just in the game of selling, selling med kits we sell a lot of things and so we're in a position to to price these be, to, in a way that our, our objective, our goal is to make it so you can afford multiple of them, so that you can have them everywhere you need them. That's that's our game. When we price these, we said, how do we make it so someone can buy three or four or five or however many they think that they need? Let's, okay, I'm, I'm gonna stop talking about price. Yep. Uh, short, the short thing is, as you can tell, it's a very important principle to us as we determine 
our our company and product and brand strategy from Mountain Man Medical. Yeah. Yep. Uh, so with that said, guys, go to concealedcarry.com forward slash trauma kits. Make your purchase or purchases today while you can get those best deals. One last thought, and then we're going to take some questions, is that when you're checking out on the website, you're going to have the opportunity, should you want, to add to your order at a discount. Let me get this out. Our trauma shears and tourniquet belt holder. So this is a simple little pouch. Uh, that normally would sell for 20, 25 bucks that you can add to your order for less than that. Uh, and it just, it's really simple. Uh, you can put on a belt, you can add it to, uh, to your, your bag or your case via molly strap. And it just is designed to simply give you access to shears and a tourniquet. And specifically, it's really designed for the cat tourniquet. So this is not required. This is something optional. You can add to your order. I just wanted to give you a heads up because you're going to see that when you go to concealcare.com forward slash trauma kits and you go to place your order, you're going to have the option to do that. Why might you want to add this? Well, you know, for me, if, if I'm a person who's on the range a lot, especially as an instructor, I want to have something on my belt, but maybe I don't want to have the whole med kit on my belt. This is a way to have just two tools really quick and handy uh, without having to have the whole kit with me. Yep. That would be a great, great thing for on the range. I mean, if, particularly for one of those situations where you know you already have your more, uh, your, your, more fully fledged out kit nearby, but you want to have something on your person, uh, like as an instructor, you know, I might want to have a tourniquet right here on my waist so that we can get something applied right away. At the same time, you know, 20 seconds away is the bigger kit, but you know, you, you, you want to take advantage of every second of time, uh, particularly with major uh, hemorrhage. So, you know, great little option in a compact form factor. Yeah, it's a cool little little add-on. You know, again, if you're interested, cool, pick one up. If not, no biggie. Yep. Cool. All right. So let's do it. Let's we take, should, some, take questions. some questions. Yeah. Absolutely. I, I actually saw one. It was just right here from uh, Larry. And oh, there was one from Doug as well. Larry asked, "What do you recommend for follow-up training with certification?" Uh, that's that's a good question. Number one, if you've not received any trauma-based uh, training at all, then I would encourage you as a first step because number one, the classes are usually free and they're readily available and that is Stop the Bleed. Yeah, you can go to stopthebleed.org and from there you scroll down a little bit, it says find training or get training, you click on that, you'll get taken to a page where you can choose your state or you can put in a zip code and it's gonna show you available classes near you and I, I've tried several states just for fun and I've always found a very long list of available, available they, they training. They are available all over the place. Yeah, generally yep. these classes are gonna run 60 to 90 minutes and they're gonna be free. Yep. Uh, but they do often require, some of them require registration, some of them will take walk-ins, uh, but it's a simple thing that you could do every couple of years and you could take a spouse with you or, or kids or adult kids or teenage kids and, and uh, I think it's a good, at least, I think it's a good refresher or starting point. Yeah, and the information, I mean, again, there's not a lot you can cover in 60 to 90 minutes, but it's a good base level knowledge. And you'll, you'll certainly come out of there knowing how to apply a tourniquet, things of that nature. Um, there are a number of other courses out there. there there's almost too many to, to even mention. Uh, it's like looking for a firearm class near you. Yeah, I mean, there's, you know. There's sometimes that many options. But but there's some, I would encourage you to, to, to look around, see what's out there. But, but again, at the very least, get a Stop the Bleed class because that's a perfect place to start. And you might talk to that instructor that does that class and see what else is also available in, in your local area. I'll add um, two other thoughts along those ahead. lines. I think the American Red Cross and the American mm -hmm. Heart Association both have their own curriculum mm -hmm. uh, for various types of classes and certifications. You can go to their website and you can find it. The American Red Cross is moving a lot more into online training as well beyond uh, their in-person mm -hmm. uh, curriculum as well. But, but those are options. You can go get a, a decent class. Those are going to be less trauma focused. Obviously, those are going to be more kind of traditional yep. first aid, uh, but they will certify you, you know, on things like CPR, first aid, uh, AED, et cetera. Also, some of you might be familiar with CERT classes, C-E-R-T. I think it's community emergency response teams. Uh, and this may not be available in every area, but uh, it's becoming more and more a thing where, where cities, counties, and, and other organizations are organizing these CERT teams. And sometimes through those uh, programs as well, there may be opportunities to get some great certification and, and, and training in these sorts of things as well. Yep. Right, so just, just another thought there. So we have two questions that are like the same. Doug and yeah, and so, Ben here. Yeah, and they both on YouTube actually watching, uh, asking if anything in the kit needs to be replaced over time. 
So it is true that there are several items that have expiration dates on them. I'll point out uh, first and foremost, uh, because I think this is probably one of the more important ones, I'll be honest, uh, and this is the quick clock. So you see there's an expiration date right here. This stuff's good for about five years. So, I mean, it is a, a uh, perishable item as far as that goes. Um, I mean, is it likely still good beyond that? I suppose it probably is, yeah. but is it, it's the best practice to go ahead and replace this, uh, you know, according to its expiration date. And, you know, you could then use maybe the expired stuff as a, sort of like a trainer. You know, uh, you could go ahead, and, that'd be an opportunity to open the package if you've never opened one up before, and kind of see what, what you're working with, um, maybe find some, you know, way of, of using it in a practice uh, situation. A lot of these, a lot, uh, there are a handful of these products, certainly the Swati tourniquet, the North American Rescue uh, mini trauma dressing, uh, the, the quick clot, as you mentioned, and maybe the gauze too, that, that do have right. prescribed, uh, the chest seals as well, that have prescribed expiration dates. None of them are less than five years. Yes. Uh, so at the very right. least, everything in this kit has a five-year shelf life. Um, and, and to Riley's point, some of them are, uh, probably more critical that you pay attention to those those dates and replace them than others. Quick Clot would be at the top of my list. The chest seals would be another one, just by the nature of the way they're packaged um, and, and, and the way they're you, set up. And, and that would be another important one because, I mean, you want to make sure that you know that, that adhesive on the chest seal is going to work. And adhesive over time generally you know, de degrades. Uh, I did notice on SWAT-T that there's a date, but it's a manufacturing date. It's not an expiration date. And I, I was looking to see if there was an expiration. I don't actually see one on the, on the SWAT-T, so that's kind of cool. Yeah. But, you know, one thing, too, uh, even if there was or wasn't an expiration date, I'll say like a cat tourniquet, uh, things change and get better over time. So this is a Gen 7. <laughs> uh, so, you know, in the case of the soft T wides, they're on Generation 4. So, you know, it's probably not a bad idea to also start changing out tourniquets and things when they are updated because there's reasons that those updates take place. I mean, in this case, they made the windlass a lot stronger and, and heavier duty. Uh, in the case of the soft T wide, Gen 4 uh, added kind of some wing clip things similar to the uh, cat tourniquet, which I think helps make it a little bit easier, especially in self-application to get that windlass locked in place while you're trying to get the secondary triangular lock also in place on that soft T wide tourniquet. And so not a bad idea either to consider swapping out tourniquets as technology improves, things get better, things get uh, easier to use. Sure. So the next question, and we're gonna have to like scroll on our screen here, mm -hmm. but I've decided the next question we answer, we'll get a free SWAT T tourniquet. Okay. So we're gonna give away our first prize, SWAT T tourniquet. Okay. Well, all right, let's see here. Can you do um uh, that's actually not a the cat edc the bad I, that's not a bad question there todd asks can you demonstrate how to carry a cat tourniquet he says edc like through a belt loop thanks much needed info for this sheepdog uh it's awkward that the question's about a cat but he's going to free swat, swat t hey you're gonna get one of these for free so thank um, you todd so actually, I want to take this opportunity to talk about staging of a cat tourniquet. All right. So this or is any, any tourniquet, really. Well, that's true. That's true. But I'll, I'll be a little bit specific to cat first, and then I'll address some other factors. Uh, so here we have a cat tourniquet in its original packaging. And so you'll see that the Velcro or hook and loop, you know, this securing tab is already pretty much in the place it needs to be. So that shouldn't even be touched, really. Uh, Really, actually, how the cat comes is almost ready for staging, except for you want to take it out of its packaging. That's the key with a cat tourniquet. So it'll come like this. And even the ones, those of you that purchase from us and you add a cat tourniquet to your kit, it's going to come in this packaging just like this. All right. But you're going to want to go ahead and remove it from that packaging and then stage it in your kit where it's ready for use like this. Make sure, because the temptation a lot of times, I think, is it actually comes in the packaging like this. But some of you might go, well, that seems kind of odd to have this kind of flapping out here, and they'll have a temptation to move it over like this. Well, that means under stress in an emergency that you're having to, to in order to use the windlass, you got to actually undo this and get out of the way so you can then turn the windlass. So you want to go ahead and have it staged like this. This final securing, this is not ultra critical. I mean, it's important because we want to make sure that windlass can't get jarred loose and pop out of those locking clips. But uh, this is how it should be staged. 
And it works pretty well on the cats to have the windlass right down the center. In fact, there's a lot of even like Kydex or polymer uh, shells that come with kind of an indentation that this will slip right in there, staged just like so. And if this kind of bothers you, well, you can kind of fold it a little bit back behind like that. Jacob took off because I think he's going to grab something for us here. And uh, now one common complaint is that the, the, this Velcro here, the, the hook part will sort of catch it closed and things like that and, and kind of, you know, may, maybe fray things or something where it's commonly in contact with. But I still think it's best to have things staged just like so, so that it's immediately ready for use. Now, he grabbed an example of a Kydex cat tourniquet holder. Call it like belt pouch holster thingy. And this particular cat it's a stiff. is, well, this one's been pulled apart a couple of times, so I think it's a little bit thicker than it. But anyway, there you go. And then, of course, the deploy. I mean, it's just going to come right out. A lot easier to get out than it was to get in, obviously. But yeah, that's exactly how that would be staged, ready for use. So it's not, you know, you hear a lot of people say, oh, I'm going to take a tourniquet, I'm going to wrap it around and use it like a belt or something. Or, you know, well, it's a common uh, way for carrying the rat's tourniquet. Sure. Which is one, if you watch the videos, Brian, is it, he, he does not recommend in my studying of the rat's tourniquets. I think that they can work. I just don't think they're the ideal tool. And here's the thing. I put them in the same category as a SWAT T tourniquet. They're not the ideal tool because they're an elastic tourniquet that requires that you get that wrapping as tight as you can as you're wrapping it. And some people are going to be better at that than others. The cool thing with, with a windless based tourniquet is that if the bleeding still hasn't stopped, you have the option of continuing to turn Take the windless. Yeah. The instruction there is you turn the windless until the bleeding stops. That is pretty foolproof. Now, it, it's not a guarantee you're going to stop bleeding even using a quality tourniquet like a CAT or a soft TY. And the recommendation then is put a second one on, typically just above uh, the, the first one. Or if you can't go any higher, maybe go just below it as long as you're not like over, right over top of the wound. And so that's why these CAT tourniquets are such, I mean, that's why I do recommend if you're buying a kit from us, I recommend you add one of the CAT tourniquets to it because a windless tourniquet is incredibly advantageous over the other elastic style. Now, I think that there's probably some ways to, uh, I can't remember who was asked the question originally. I mean, you could probably tuck this in your waistband or tuck it in through your belt. Uh, or, you know, there's probably a variety of ways you can come up with how to carry a cat tourniquet. I think some are probably better than others and some will probably protect it better than others. Um, but uh, I think, you know, you're, you're, you can use your imagination on this to some extent. I've even seen some inside waistband uh, pouches and things that you can use to carry one of these, you know, somewhere inside the waistband like you would with your gun, you know, or a spare mag, uh, that sort of thing. So there's a lot of options of how you can stage and carry something like this. So Todd, you win the SWAT tourniquet. If you'll just send us a message, either you can go to our website, use the contact form at concealedcarry.com forward slash contact, or you can go to Facebook and send us a direct message. Say, hey, I'm the one who won the SWAT T tourniquet, and we'll make sure we get that shipped to you. Okay, the next, the next question, Riley, is going to get the, hmm, I think the next one's going to get this North American Rescue 4-inch ETD. Awesome. Well, I think it's appropriate because it's going to go to Jenny Lee Skirvin watching on YouTube. She asks if all the questions, or if all the products are in waterproof packaging, asking mm -hmm. because of a potential canoe trip. Uh, that's, that's a really valid question. Not everything is in waterproof packaging in, nope. in the kit, unfortunately. Now, this this one here, I think it's appropriate that you're winning that because that's sealed. Uh, it's like vacuum sealed, so that's that's done really well. The SWAT T is definitely, you know, it's it's in a sealed package, so that's going to do just fine. Um, even though these seem like these are, you know, in a in a plastic package that are sealed pretty well, I don't know if I would trust those uh, if they were to get wet. Same what, with the elastic wrap. Yeah. Yeah. What I would probably recommend is. I mean, if you have one of these kits, Jenny, uh, it's pretty small. This is going to fit in a gallon bag easily. So if you're if you're trying to pack for the canoe trip, just take your normal kit here, throw it in a gallon bag, you know, like seal it, seal it, call it good. I think I think you'll be in good shape that way. All right. So Jenny, send us a message either our contact form concealedcare.com or via Facebook message. Tell us you're the one who won the North American Men North American Rescue Mini ETD, and we'll get that yep. shipped off to you as well. Awesome. All right, quick clot is next. Next question, Riley's going to win the, the quick clot. We're just scrolling down and picking questions here. 
Let's see. Um, Jason, Sherrock, 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 Sherrick. Jason on YouTube, what do you recommend putting in an ankle kit if one were to break it down? I think he's saying. Uh, uh, we, we lost the deconstruct stone. the Yellowstone kit. Uh, good question because it, it is probably challenging to fit everything that's in the Yellowstone into an ankle kit. Uh, and I'm wishing I actually had my ankle kit with me right now, or I'd show you some some things that are in mine. Uh, it's in my truck. Okay, so don't don't get you know don't don't, don't, don't judge me too harshly here. It's out in my truck, uh, but I also have my kit, of course, in my backpack, so I've always got one with me. But um, in my ankle kit, I've got a windless style tourniquet. In my case, it's a soft T wide because the soft T wide packages a little bit more compactly than the cat. So I, I roll with the soft T wide. By the way, we're working on getting soft T wides added to our store. Uh, working on getting our set up with an account with, uh, with PacMed Solutions, and, and hopefully that'll be a, an option that's available soon because I think they're both great tourniquets. Again, soft T wide is a little bit more compact, so that's one way that I solve this, uh, this question, this problem. Uh, I also have chest heels, I have trauma shears, I have quick clot, and I've got uh, gloves, a pressure bandage, and a pressure bandage. Uh, basically, one of one of these. Okay. Yep. A couple of things to keep in mind: if it's not a, if it's not a product that you need to be sterile, right? If you don't care if it's if it's not something that's important that it be sterile, then you can always rearrange it, right? You can pull out a package, and you can. You know, if you really felt strongly, for example, you wanted some sort of elastic wrap, uh, you know, teach their own, then you don't have to take this massive thing and stuff it in your ankle carrier. Uh, right. You could refold it the way you want. Uh, the chest seals are another interesting one. The chest seals seem rather bulky, uh, but, you know, you could you could fold these another another time over, yeah. or you could fold them in they, half. Or these are very whatever. flexible. You're actually not yeah. going to harm these by folding these anymore. So uh, the chest seals I have are actually... That, that very thing, they're pretty, actually pretty folded, folded again. Yeah. Um, it, you know, it, it's uh, challenging at first sometimes, but you know, I, they, they sort of break in and, and you know, you get a good crease in them and, and, and they work okay. But that's, that's what I have, tourniquet, chest seals, pressure bandage, quick clot, shears, gloves. I mean, I, I kind of think that those are, I mean, would it be nice to have maybe some extra, uh, you know, rolls of gauze or, or that sort of thing? Sure, but I've got the things that, that are really truly emergent, you know, stop major hemorrhage with the tourniquet, the pressure dressing, and the quick clot. Like that's what those are there for. I got chest seals, number two casualty, you know, uh, thing on the battlefield. Um, trauma shears, because I think they're very useful. So, I mean, I, I, that's how I try to think through it, Jason, is it, it, particularly if you follow the March algorithm as, as we teach the summit classes, uh, that's how I would prioritize things. Yeah. So I literally think through it that way. Jason, we do sell ankle carriers uh, on our website, not med medical or consultcare.com. And so you can go there and look, and we're adding another, hopefully more options there soon. You want the quick lot? So, Jason, message us on Facebook or go to consultcare.com forward slash contact and uh, let us know you won the quick lot. We'll get that shipped out to you. Yep. All right. Let's, uh, let's see. We, are we ready to give away a cat? I guess I'm giving away one more. I don't know what I added, but we said five prizes. It's going to end up being six. Okay. So the cat. Cool. Who Extra gets the cat? bonus uh, prize. Um, let's see. They're moving too fast. Too many questions coming in. All right. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I'm, and I'm trying to identify one here. Uh, does the cat... That's a good question, but I, I, I'm sorry. I'm starting to be a little more picky because we're starting to give away more expensive stuff. Uh... You know, I think this one's actually pretty, well, let's go with this one. Let's go with Joe's question right here. Do you guys sell replacement items of some need to be used? I mean, I think Joe's saying it, it's stuff that's expected to be used. Uh, do, I mean, we sell a la carte. You can buy any of these products yep. that go in the kits right on the website. Short answer is yeah, everything that's in the kit, you can buy a la carte. Even the pouch, even the patch, the Velcro patch itself. Yep. Um, we're happy to make money selling stuff. So anything that's in any of these kits, you can buy independently. And that we have other components that we sell that are not in these kits. Uh, we have some additional products from H&H Medical, other things from uh, North American Rescue and other products too. So you can go to mountainmanmedical.com or consultcare.com and just click on the first aid category and you can find anything that's in these kits and other products that we, mm -hmm. that we sell as well. 
There you go. Uh, and you, yeah, you could you could say, hey, you know, when, when these expire, I want to replace them, or you might just say, I want more of them, or you might have to use something, and then you certainly would want a, a replacement there. Yep. 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 Good. Good question. All right. Let's see. So Let's I'm going to ask her a couple things. I saw real quick. Oh, uh, who was that again? That was Joe, right? That was Joe. Joe, make sure you message us to get your cat. Uh, so people have asked about the training content. Will it be available on uh, DVD? The answer is yes, eventually, but it'll be online streaming initially. So if you buy a trauma kit right now before the end of the week during the summit, you're going to get online access, permanent online access to these videos. If you want the DVD later when it's available, you'd have to buy it. And I don't know what we'll price that for. Probably between 20 and 40 bucks. And how would people access the online streaming? So you'll get a link via email, but basically you'll just go to consultcare.com. You'll log into your account. You'll click on my courses. And that's where that'll be. And that's true. Even if they bought on mountainmanmedical.com. Right, right. Regardless of where you right. buy, that's where you'll get access to the just course. Asking all the yeah. clarifying yeah. questions here. Jacob. It's not ready yet because we just, yeah. I mean, we were filming these as we went. So the video that went live today, we just, you know, it wasn't done that, that, that long ago. Uh, so we're getting those we're getting those done and, and ready for you. Uh, and, and He's giving away all the secrets. Yeah, we, it, you know we we were so anxious to get this launched uh, that we pushed really hard to to make it all come together, uh, and it required a lot of work out of me and Brian and Corey, <laughs> the primary team that was filming, producing, and editing uh, the videos. Uh, so yeah, there, a lot of these videos were filmed while uh, others were being already released. Uh, so really. Proud of the product for the way it's come together, uh, and I'm excited to see. Uh, you know, the, I, I want to actually go through and watch it from start to finish. Yeah. Uh, again, now I've kind of seen things, you know, piecemeal, as many of you have probably as well, and I think it'd be good to review and go back through from start to finish. Yep. Some other questions that I'm just seeing real quick that I think are clarifying questions about the, the kits themselves. People want to know is there a list of everything that comes in the kit? Yeah, if you go to Mountain Man Medical. Dot com and click on either kit you can just see a list right there with pictures of everything that's in there now, on the summit website where you guys have been watching the videos for the last week and a half concealcare.com forward slash summit at the bottom of the page is an actual like comparison chart like a side by side sweetwater versus yellowstone what comes in each one so you could go there too to find it um yeah i guess mean, i'm smiling because of cammy's comment oh what you say we haven't heard a riley tampon rant yet uh, don't don't i'll, let's I'll, say, that, that, I'll yeah. say this much cammy there are no tampons included in the sweet water or the Yellowstone kits. Yeah, that's not going to happen. So, you are free to add your own tampon, but not for trauma use. <laughs> so I think next we need to give away the sweet water. So find us a good yep. question, Riley. So the yep. next the next question yep. is going to win the sweet water kit. We're at forty eight twenty two, and uh, yeah, I'm holding the sweet water right here in my hand. So here we go. Who gets the who gets the All sweet right. water? Uh, let's see. What question do I have to ask to win? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> That's not nice good enough. Nice try. Yeah, nice try. I'm gonna I'm gonna go up a little ways. I know there were some earlier, so I'm gonna be a little more picky because again we're we're going up in value here. There's um, not different colors. There's someone who asked that. The only the black is the only pouch we sell currently. Mm -hmm. Um, that was Jenny's question. We covered that. Let's see. We talked about that. Um. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah, so many questions in here. This is yeah, wild. Yeah, a lot. We're being picky because you're going to get a $50 prize here. Let's see. Okay. Oh, and that's as far as let me go. All right, so I'm going to start working on it. Okay, here we go. Uh, Someone's mentioned giving, buying these as gifts. Great idea. These are these make great gift ideas. We answered that one. How long will the deal last? Someone asked that. I'll just quickly answer that. It's basically through Sunday night. Uh, so the sun, today was the last day of the official summit as far as the videos being released. But the deal on the kits in terms of the price and if buy this, then get all videos permanently, those two deals go through the end of this week. So, you know, buy now. Oh, this is a good question. Perfect. All right, who is that? Dave Panson on YouTube. Dave right, Panson, Dave. congrats. You get a sweet water kit. Dave gets the sweet water. Dave asks, does it compromise a tourniquet to practice with it? Mm, very good question. I would say in the case of a cat tourniquet, uh, yes, absolutely it does. Uh, because, I mean, you're, you're going to kind of stretch things out a little bit. I mean, you're putting a lot of pressure on these as you're, as you're using them. 
Um, I think the soft tee wide probably handles that a little bit better. It's just built a little bit more robustly, but I would still strongly suggest not using one you're carrying for actual trauma use uh, to don't practice with them, okay? Uh, SWAT, did I say SWAT tee wide? You said soft tee. Soft tee wide. SWAT tee wide. <laughs> that's, that's, not a, that's not existing. That's not a product. I could, anyway, I was talking about soft tee wide. SWAT tee, a tourniquet, I would not practice with that. In fact, I would leave it in its, in its packaging it comes in. It's easy, tear, it's ready for use. I would buy a one for training use. So I encourage you to buy training tourniquets. Uh, do not practice with the ones that you're actually carrying for an emergency situation uh, because you're just taking your, something could end up breaking, something could end up stretching, something just might, it's just not gonna probably work as well as it would the first time that it's used brand spanking new. All right. Yeah. I will say as much about the cheap Chinese knockoff fake tourniquets. Those ones definitely show a lot of use very, very quickly uh, when you apply them and reapply them. Uh, so, and yeah, I, it just goes to show how poorly they are built compared to a genuine cat Gen 7. What I like, Dave, about your question is you're thinking to yourself, okay, I'm watching some training from these guys, but I need to actually practice this. Yes. And that's great. You know, just having watched video and then sticking the kit in the bag, uh, while that's great, you know, actually saying, I want to know what this is like. I want to slip this. To, I want to practice putting on someone else. I want to practice putting it on myself, especially on an arm and appendage, so I know what that's like. Uh, I think that's really, really smart and good idea. And you know, all of us need to actually practice doing these things. So I appreciate that you're in that mindset. Perhaps we'll have some available for sale on the website soon that are marketed yeah. as training terms. Maybe we will. Uh, I, w I think it's best to practice with the real thing because then. You're, you're ruling out any other potential variables. But, you know, if you were to go and buy some of those cheap knockoff tourniquets for practice use only, I wouldn't, I wouldn't uh, be too concerned about that. I think that's probably not a bad idea if you're looking for a low cost option to get some practice in. As far as practicing with some of the other things, I think it's probably not a bad idea to go ahead and order right from our website. You know, maybe one of these North American Rescue ETD responder uh, or mini responder uh, bandages and open one up and see what it's like and see what it's made of and then try it out. Yeah, that's going to have some cost to it, but so does training. Yeah, so, you in, know, independently, like this, this is a five dollar product, five, something. six bucks. Uh, you know, you, you could you could order SWAT T and open that up and, and you know, order because I think the training ones in this case are about the same price as well. About 18 bucks. So it doesn't really matter if you, I mean, the blue ones are the ones that are training or, or trainers. So that's, that's not a bad idea because then you don't maybe confuse a training one with a real one. But uh, you could just buy any of these and practice with it, okay? It's going to cost you a little bit. But for probably 50 bucks, you could buy one of just about most of the common things that you would use and be able to open them up, see what the packaging is like, see what's inside, check them out, get some practice with them. I think that's an excellent suggestion and an excellent question, Dave. So Dave wins the Sweetwater Trauma Kit. So Dave, contact us, Dave Panson. Contact us to claim your Sweetwater Kit. All right, so next question gets the Yellowstone. This is the big one. So this person's gonna get an $80 kit. Uh, it's, it's a big deal. It's the Sweetwater plus adding the Quick Clot, the Chest Seals, and one more gauze. So that's the Yellowstone, right? Not rocket science. Yep. It's $79.99. So uh, Riley's looking at some of the new questions here that are coming in. Who's going to get the big, the big, mm. awesome Yellowstone? Yep, yep. Uh, let's see. Mm. Uh, ah, interesting. What is my birthday? Nice try, Mark. <laughs> that doesn't qualify. You do, you do not win. Let's see. All right, all right, all right, all right. Um, <laughs> so there are some questions here we got to answer. We're just we're just looking for a really really good one for the purpose <laughs> of giving away a yellow star. This is a, a really good question, actually. I'm going to let you decide uh, uh, if you want to okay. accept that one yep. or not. Done. I, I kind of like that he's asking about that. Okay, so Mark wants to know what is the inspiration for naming the kits? So Mark, Mark Okinowski? Okniansky. 
you win the Yellowstone, Mark. So <laughs> Congrats, what is, Mark. What is the uh, inspiration for naming these these kits? So as a company, uh, I, as a person, I take names very seriously. But uh, certainly when you're talking about a company trying to figure out a brand, that's something we spend some time on. So there's some things you should know. One is that Riley and I grew up in Mountain Man territory. Yep. So I grew up in southwestern Wyoming, Riley in uh, eastern Idaho. And that is Rocky Man or Mountain Man land. Yes, uh, it, it is. It, I mean, Very much so. during the 1800s, that's where the fur trade took place. That's where the explorers were. That's where they were trapping. And so, I mean, I had huge sections in school on mountain men in like third, fourth, and fifth grade. Uh, I think we, we even like had field trips yep. that were related to mountain men. Mountain men rendezvous yes. uh, that go on in those, in, in, in like in my backyard practically. Fort uh, Bridger, I went to Fort Bridger in fifth grade. Fort Henry is an old, like if there's nothing even left of Fort Henry, but the, the, a marker showing like Andrew Henry is one of the, the dudes that started the company that even like, you know, when they were looking for uh, for those first hundred mountain men to go out there and trap all these beaver pelts and you know all this stuff, right? So a lot of history in in our neck of the woods. So that's the history. That, that's that's go. why it would particularly appeal to us. Now that said, the mountain man of the 1800s. This is a person who had to be self sufficient. Uh, you know, we think of emergencies today. Of I get in a car accident, I got to hurry and put on the tourniquet because ambulance is 10, 15 minutes away. Well, if you were a mountain man, you were out dealing with you know, firearms, you were dealing with sharp, very sharp traps uh, and all sorts of things. You're in the wilderness and you were days away mm -hmm. from medical help uh, at best sometimes. And so these guys were very efficient. In fact, they, they carried a bag uh, called the possibilities bag. Uh, and the possibilities bag generally had some, some, some basic first aid emergency related items. And most mountain men were pretty proficient at applying those. So we felt like, you know, when we think of mountain men, we think of freedom, we think of America, we think of our, our rich history, we think of um, what I would call independence and self-sufficiency, and all of that seemed to be uh, congruent with the brand we wanted to roll out for our, our first aid, our trauma-related gear. Yep. Now let's talk about Sweetwater and Yellowstone. Yep. I'm sorry, Mark asked. Everyone else thinks this is boring. Yell at Mark on Facebook, okay? <laughs> so Sweetwater and Yellowstone. So Sweetwater is our most basic core essentials kit, right? F less than $50 right now. And it's, it's as stripped down as we feel comfortable getting. You know, we, we're pulling anything else out of that, we would not be comfortable with. And so when we were looking at names, we thought about the Sweetwater. The Sweetwater is a river uh, that is probably one of the only rivers that's noteworthy, that's completely 100% in Wyoming. So I'm very partial to the Sweetwater. I grew up in Sweetwater County. I was born in Sweetwater Memorial County Hospital, Sweetwater <laughs> County Memorial Hospital, as was my wife. Um, so Sweetwater is very, you know, part of my world. But the Sweetwater is, was probably one of the more, more trafficked rivers by mountain men in the 1800s. Uh, they used the Sweetwater River a ton. The Sweetwater River is not that long. It's less than, two, it's less than 300 miles, between 200 and 300 miles. So it's a relatively small river, but probably the highly, most highly trafficked river by the mountain man of the 1800s to get to their rendezvous and various trading uh, points. So highly used by mountain men, relatively small, um, relatively precarious too, in terms of uh, tra you know, traveling it and- And very remote. Very remote. <laughs> yes, I grew up in a remote place. Uh, so yeah, that's the Sweetwater, the Yellowstone. Well, so, the Yellowstone, I mean, everyone- Everyone but, knows Yellowstone. And it can be both the name, I think, of the park, but also the Yellowstone River. Again, right. another river that's kind of right in the, the, the core of where all this mountain man activity took place. And the Yellowstone area, the Yellowstone, and a lot of what's encompassed in Yellowstone National Park, of course, you're very passionate about Yellowstone, you know a lot about it. I, I used to make visits there every year as a kid as well. Um, but, you know, a lot of uh, the springs, the, the hot springs, the, the, the pools of water with all the minerals, a lot of those were looked at as being healing and having healing properties. Uh, at the very least, I'm sure some of those are very nice to soak in after a long day, you know, running your trapping lines. But, uh, uh, you know, so and it's kind of viewed as a, so some of the Indians, uh, it was a very, like, sacred place for them. Uh, and, 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 and I think it was also the, the same way to a lot of the uh, mountain men as well, that it kind of respected that uh, part of the Indian culture. 
Um, and so, yeah, just kind of a cool, special place, again, right in the heart of Mountain Man territory. Well, Yellowstone was really discovered by the Mountain Man. Yeah. Uh, Jim Coulter, uh, C-O-L-T-E-R, was the first man, white man, you know, supposedly kind of idea to really stumble upon Yellowstone, the geysers yeah. and the mud pots and all that kind of thing. And people didn't believe him. He came back, he told the stories, people were like, you're crazy. And for a long time, it, it was referred to as Coulter's hell, because yeah. he thought, you know, that's how he described it. It's like, this is not on He's, earth. Yeah, I mean, just I, sound, I, like, yeah, this is not you know, good. Geysers and stuff shooting out, yeah. up, you know, ran, at random yeah. times, you know, and, and, and uh, pools of water that would melt the skin off of your Yeah, bones, that, was, you know? that was not considered good. <laughs> So, so, so Coulter, you know, he, he's, he's, a man, he's a mountain man. If you went yep. to the Wikipedia page for mountain men, you'd find his name on it. So he, he is credited as being the first kind of white man to yep. discover Yellowstone. And uh, Coulter Bay is a beautiful place right now in actually Teton National Park, uh, also in Wyoming. It's just gorgeous, named after Jim Coulter. So there you have it. Mountain man, Sweetwater, Long -winded Yellowstone. Answer, but I think it's important that we explain, you know, why it is what it is. I, I, I think... That whole, you know, I'm reminded of another, I mean, famous now probably because of the movie The Revenant, uh, the story about Hugh Glass, who was attacked by a bear, ultimately left behind by his fellow uh, mountain men, you know, trappers, uh, had to crawl a crazy, you know, like, you know, some people say it's probably a lot less, but he had to crawl because he had broken bones and stuff. They said, the story goes it was 200 miles. I don't know if it's 200 miles or not, but it was a long ways. And, uh, you know, he, he had to let maggots eat the rotting flesh in his wounds from that bear attack so he wouldn't get gangrene. And I'm thinking, you know what, guys? So you don't have to crawl 200 miles across no man's land with maggots eating your flesh so you don't get, you know, sick and die from sepsis or something. Get some basic knowledge and training. Buy a kit. Uh, we have this amazing technology available these days, and uh, yeah, but I'm, I'm inspired by stories like that and the, and the fact that these guys were so self-reliant, so hardy in their, in their nature, in their temperament, in their ability to survive extreme conditions, and it's inspiring to, you know, look to that and go, okay, we'll do a little part here and uh, make something for you to hopefully help you be a little bit more prepared yourselves. Yeah, I'm, I'm not a mountain man, uh, but, and you don't have to be one <laughs> to, use, to use the kit. <laughs> But I'm confident that uh, you know there's some there's some inspiration there. Um, okay, the story the story explains a lot about Mr. Paulson. <laughs> I don't have to tell you. I grew, up, I, grew, I grew up very close to Fort Bridger. Speaking of famous uh, mountain man Jim Bridger. Okay, yep. so there were some other questions here. I did think we wanted to quickly kind of address. relevant stuff. Yeah. Um, can we what? get bulk pricing for a church security team or something like that? Yes. Contact us. Contact us. Nothing on the website. No code currently. But tell us what you have in mind, and we'll tell you the best we can. Churches, do. schools, I think we're we're very open minded to that sort of thing. Yep. Uh, if you're in law enforcement and you're watching yep. this, uh, or if you're in the military and you're like, you know, this would be better than sourcing it from other sources, from yep. other government contracts, uh, we're we're very open to that. Yep. Someone asked, will it be training at the USCCA Expo? And the answer is yes. So Mountain Man Medical will have an entire booth at the USCCA Expo. That's March 20, 21, and 22 in Kansas City. And uh, throughout the weekend, there will be live demonstrations being done at that booth. So even if you didn't, if you didn't want to, you know, buy anything, you can come by our booth if you're there in Kansas City, and you can check. The, there'll be a schedule at the booth of upcoming demonstrations. Brian will be there, and we'll be, you know, throughout the weekend. I don't know how often, but every couple hours, there'll be a demonstration on some uh, medical trauma-related topic and, and training. So yeah, let's come by if you're in Kansas City and see us there as well. Yep. Uh, Daryl asked if. I said that the SWAT T training tourniquet was blue. What color is the real one? Uh, there's a couple of colors. The I think the most common one is orange. Uh, what else is there, Jacob? Uh, the blue, the, there's orange and black. Orange and black. There you go. Yeah, orange and black are the real yeah. colors. So, so I think most of what we have is orange. Yeah, we only have the orange. Yeah, we, so we only stock the orange. Uh, I, I think it's kind of your you know irrelevant. Like it shouldn't really matter too much. But but you'll you'll get orange if you order from us. Uh, we currently don't stock the blue ones, but maybe we will eventually. Yeah. But this is a training one right here. Yeah, and it's kind of weird to see on the green screen. Green, maybe I'll hold it oh, up in yeah. front of me. Maybe it'll help. But uh, this, this is this is what a SWAT T looks like. I don't know if you guys can see it real well. That's trippy. But it kind of yeah. It's close enough to that green color that. <laughs> yeah. Here's a uh, kind of this is a counterfeit cat tourniquet. Um, it's blue, and but you can see it's you know, where's our where's our cat? Oh, there it is. 
just kind of gives you a sense for some of the differences, even though outside of color, you can kind of start to see some of the differences between the, the, the counterfeit and the real thing. Um, it's a lot less hardy. I can tell you that it's just so much more um, junky feeling. And the windlass <laughs> is a lot thinner. So much and, thinner uh, and weaker. weaker. Yeah. Um, yeah. But you can get, traditionally, most of these tourniquet companies make a blue training tourniquet. So I would encourage you, if you're looking for a trainer, if you buy it blue, they're, they're going to have one available in blue, certainly. Yep. What in the kit is reusable, Tony asked. Uh, I would say... The marker. And the, the marker. Shears. Yeah, and even with the shears, you know, if I used them in an emergency situation, these are so inexpensive, I'd probably go ahead and replace them anyway. Yeah, we saw a two-pack for like so, three ninety nine. Yeah, so, I mean, if you actually use this in a real situation, chances are they've been contaminated potentially by someone's uh, body fluids or, or blood. So you, you probably want to just toss them anyway, right? So what's usable? Uh, pouch, probably very little. Well, and again, if, if it became contaminated, I'd probably, you know, yeah, yeah you, you want to keep that kind of stuff in mind, right? You know, so, um, but definitely, yeah, like the, the, the core components, if once they're used, I would say they're used. All right. Chrissy has a good question here. If you had to pick top three items to carry, what would they be for those who might not want to start with a kit yeah. that will likely cost effective to do so? I'm going to go back to that March algorithm. And I kind of answered a similar question earlier as far as uh, work your way through that algorithm. And so we got to look first at mass That's hemorrhage, hemorrhage, right? Uh, well, actually, let me back up because there's a section that Brian does before uh, in the training, before we start talking about the March algorithm, he talks about uh, uh, your own personal protection and safety, as well as that of your casualty, the person you're taking care of. Uh, and so the reality is you, you, I would have a pair of gloves to protect you, right? You don't know what is going on with this person. You don't know if they've got HIV or, or, or some other uh, disease or, or whatever, right? You know, so uh, gloves, tourniquet, wherever that tourniquet went. And... Uh, and then I'd, I'd have uh, probably chest seals, to be honest yeah, that with was, you. That's where I was going to go next. I mean, if you talk about like things that are the most life-threatening, if that's our category, then if you take a serious wound to an ex to, to a, an appendage on the limb, you need the tourniquet. If you take it to the chest, you need the chest seal. So those seem to be, yeah. for me, like the it, top two It's things. kind of the most likely areas for someone to get wounded, particularly like in a, in a, in a fight, in a gunfight. Uh, and, and the reality is, is this is probably your most likely area, but it's short of you being wounded in the heart or aorta where you're going to probably die anyway, regardless. Uh, this is actually probably the less threatening wound uh, immediately in the short term. Uh, you got your extremities where it's possible we, we sever one of those arteries. Uh, so that's where this is going to come in handy. We, we have to be capable of stopping massive hemorrhage. Uh, and if we have massive hemorrhage in a junctional area, that's where the, the chest, it's almost hard for me, Chrissy, to pick only Just three things block. because I almost have to say this and this and that and these. I would say you got a half, right? So, anyway, yep. that's a good, good question. Yep, good stuff. All right, guys, we're not going to be on much longer. We have been on for <laughs> two, like two hours. <laughs> so, uh, someone asked where the pouch is made. Joe, the pouch is made in China. Yeah. Yep, these are coming from China. That's the, that's the way we made it affordable. Yep. Yep. Oh, I'll let you uh, let's scroll. see. Do can, the, can the training tourniquet be used in a pitch? In a pitch? Um, if it was the if if it was, I mean, <laughs> I suppose so, right? Okay, especially if it was the authentic one, right? If it was an authentic uh, cat or an authentic soft T Y or or a SWAT T. Of course, we don't really worry so much about counterfeits with this because I just don't see anybody producing counterfeit SWAT Ts. I don't think they care enough to. Um, if it was a genuine thing, I'd say, yeah, I suppose it could be used at a pinch. Uh, there, if it's been used for training, I mean, you're you're definitely taking the risk that it's not going to work, right? But is it better than nothing? I, I suppose it's better than nothing. What I would say is that I have zero zilch nada faith in the counterfeit ones. I, I wouldn't even. I don't even know if I would bother because I think I could probably. I could probably just. I could probably be more successful in applying direct pressure and locating the artery itself, like locating the, the brachial artery and Jacob's, you know, the inner part of his arm or the femor femoral in his, in his thigh. I could probably be more effective applying direct pressure than using one of those crappy Chinese tourniquets. They're pretty bad. That's the reality. So, uh, 
yeah, I, I would not use a counterfeit tourniquet in any circumstances whatsoever. I have zero faith. So a couple of comments here that I think are important. Someone said uh, some timeline questions. How soon will the kit be shipped? Mm -hmm. And how soon will you get access to the training videos? Mm -hmm. So let's, let's answer both of those. So the kits are shipping. Yep. Uh, that's the answer. Like we, are, we're, we have all the product in stock right now. We're putting the kits together in that room right there. And back there in that warehouse, they're getting shipped out. Um, we're, we're, we're moving as fast as we can. They're, they're shipping as fast as we can put them together. Yeah, yeah. So, so the answer is right away, um, relatively right away. Uh, the second question, how soon will you get access to all the training content next week? I'm not going to commit to a specific day, um, but today, the last day went live in the summit. It will expire tomorrow night at midnight. And at that point, we're going to start going through and getting all those videos ready to actually be published on the website for you guys to have permanent access. All those of you who have who have bought yep. a kit. Yep. Uh, Casey may, makes a comment about duct tape, and so I thought that was worth addressing real quick. Duct tape, I think, is a useful uh, tool. And actually, so I talked about everything that was in my ankle kit. Duct tape is actually another thing I didn't mention that is in my ankle kit uh, in a flat folded configuration. In fact, we sell uh, on our website flat flat folded duct tape um, made by H. Well, I don't know if they make the tape or not, but certainly it's a uh, advantageous to have in the way it's packaged, at least I think so for my purposes, because the H&H &H duct tape is flat folded, uh, as opposed to most of the time your duct tape is going to be on a roll. And the problem with rolls, like if you had a big trauma bag, you know, kit bag, that's probably not a big deal to just like have a roll of duct tape in there. Uh, but the, having the flat fold is really convenient because uh, you could fit it more readily in some of these kits, including my ankle kit. And in the case of that flat fold, it actually has a backing on it. Uh, so I think that's kind of, I think that's convenient. I think it's also important to stage that. You talked earlier, uh, and we talked earlier about staging stuff in your kits. Uh, a lot of stuff probably should remain in its packaging for sterile purposes, but something like if you got tape, even if it's medical tape, just straight up, just like some kind of medical tape, or if it's duct tape, uh, you probably want to have like the starting corner of that folded over or something so you can, you know, just you're not trying to separate that tape away from anything or from a backing uh, while you're under stress in, in, a, in a time crunch. So have things like that staged, have you in your tourniquet staged. I kind of start, started talking about staging. The, the cat's pretty easy once you remove it from your packaging. A soft tee wide, there's a couple of ways you can actually prepare that tourniquet to be very compact and very flat folded. Uh, maybe we'll do a video sometime that goes in depth on that. Um, staging things like uh, just having things at, at the ready, having things at, at you know, ready to go, I think is really key. So you want to put some thought into how you would use things, how you would grab things. Um, and I think, you know, tape and all that stuff uh, applies as well. Yep. So Let's check out the yeah. platform. Duct, duct tape. Good yeah. idea. We saw it. And, and Brian shows in one of the videos how to improvise a chest seal. I, I know Mark actually asked uh, as well about how we would use plastic from the wrapping of, of one of these other products for an improvised chest seal. And it's really as simple as cutting out piece of plastic that's big enough to fit over the, that opening that you're trying to occlude. And if you have duct tape and you kind of clean that area, so, you know, so that it's fairly clean and fairly dry, duct tape is usually pretty sticky. Uh, and you can start applying some strips of duct tape where you're taping three of the four sides and creating an improvised chest seal. So uh, there you go. We're getting some, some, some crap here about our, our Chinese pouches. Uh, so a couple <laughs> thoughts. One is, on import, these things are inspected relative to the virus situation, so no one's going to get sick. We're not virusing anybody uh, with the Chinese pouches. Also, all of the pouches we ordered were ordered and arrived before coronavirus was even a thing. It's true, but, but everything coming out of China right now is being inspected. <laughs> Here's what you guys need to understand. As a company, we have to make decisions about when we're going to pay extra to have things locally made and when we're not. And in this situation, our, our guiding principles, as we've already made it very clear, were quality carrier yep. with name brand quality components at the lowest cost imaginable. Those were our guiding principles, and we couldn't meet those three criteria and have this made in the U.S. That was not an option. I can tell you right now that if we were to, if you, if we were to sell the exact same kit with a U.S. made pouch, the price of the Sweetwater would probably be $79.99. And the price of the Yellowstone would probably be over $100. Actually, it would be over $100. Well over $100. Yeah. So, you know, it's one of those things, like, I get it. And and, and we're, we're big believers in USA-made stuff. I mean, 
our shop timers we make in-house. We haven't outsourced, we haven't sent overseas. It would be probably in the long term, especially cheaper if we were to have some Chinese outfit uh, make our shot timers for us. It'd be a lot easier for us as well. But, uh, you know, there, we believe in, in U.S. made where we can. And, uh, you know, something that is, is this a critical piece of kit? It is, you know, it keeps everything in there, but it's far more important that we maintain uh, our budget for these kits to where everything that goes in the kit is U.S. made and high quality. And actually, not all U.S. made, some of these products are actually European, to be fair, right? Uh, which is, it's still the best stuff that's out there. So the point is, is where we can, where it makes sense, uh, and where I think we really truly care about the quality, that's where the quality exists. Not that these are not quality, because I think these are actually really well made. We, we work with a supplier that makes uh, bags, and uh, these are well constructed. We had samples come um, in, we sent back feedback. Uh, we, true. We, this was no, no joke. So. If, you, if, that, if that turns you off and says, you know, makes you not want to buy one of our kits because the pouch comes from China, then either don't buy one of our kits or buy one of the kits and throw the pouch away and get all the stuff out of it because the stuff is really what you want. Put, you, put it in your own pouch. Uh, great comment here from Andrew. He says, hey, guys, the videos have been great. I've been a medic for over 25 years and the content has been really good. Cool. Thanks, Andrew. We appreciate that. That's awesome. And uh, okay, so everyone says they were just teasing us about the about the coronavirus. We appreciate the tease. We can we can take it, guys. We've been into this now all two hours and like four minutes. Yep. So we're gonna call it a day. If you've been here the whole time, you're a wonderful human, and we appreciate your time. Concealedcare.com forward slash trauma kits. That's where you can go right now and purchase as many of whatever of these kits you want. And I'll remind you that you still have until tomorrow at midnight to watch the last video of the summit. You can find those links in your emails. If you've been getting the emails all week, it's the same link. It always takes you to the same page. Or you can go to concealedcarry.com forward slash summit to access that content. Order yep. now. Order this week. Scrape together the budget. Tell your friends because, A, the more we sell, the better we can keep going and doing this and source more products for you. But more important for you, this is the time to get the most affordable high quality name brand components and gear that you need and access of course to all the training we put out over the last 13 days permanently at no additional cost that's a wrap for me Riley. yeah that's all that's all i got as well all right guys thanks so much until next time yep take care